It's a free weekend. Boys, we're gonna friendly fire some people. <laughs> There's a good time. Have I settled on what build I'm going to do? I don't know. Like, let, let's let's get started with that. Let, let's 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 get more on topic. I was kind of waiting for the ads to end. Um, so we're gonna play role play. So, for those of you who've never played Caves of Cud before, there are obviously, as you can see here, four different modes we can play for character creation. We got the classic, which is what I generally play, which is you know permadeath. When you lose your character, you die. The run that I did on excuse me, Thursday, I kind of intentionally ended it when I did. I I wanted to. Um, <laughs> just be here, all right, asshole. See, I agree with that IHQ. It's like, if you're going to be a dick, just be a dick. <laughs> Don't pretend to, like, hide the fact that you're being a dick. Um, anyway, uh, so per permadeath, when you die, you, you lose your character. That's that's the traditional way to play. That's the, the way the game is meant to be played. Um, and that's usually how I play. And the run that I did on Thursday, I kind of intentionally jumped into a hole to die early uh, because I wanted that character to die. Role play, which is what we're going to be doing today, lets us checkpoint at settlements, means you will absolutely lose a lot of progress. But um, it means that you're not going to outright lose your character when you die. So we're going to be playing role play because I want to see the new content. And the best way to learn new content in a game like this is by doing a tourist run, which is role play, right? Where you have some form of... Well, actually, the tourist run's more wander, but we'll get to that in a second. Or, or enabling some form of save scumming or save saving, right? Um... So that's how we're that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a full story playthrough, uh, and then hopefully that'll give us or give me, I guess, enough knowledge of the new zones that we can reasonably like build up characters to get through the new stuff um, on classic. Now then, then there's also the actual tourist mode, um, which isn't so much for learning the game. This is just if you want to read the story. So this is just if you want to play through the the the. Um, uh, what, what's the word? This is just if you want to play through it like an adventure game kind of thing. Where most things are neutral to you, uh, you get no XP for killing stuff, and you get a lot of XP for discovering and performing the water ritual. So basically finding settlements, uh, finishing quests, give you the majority of your XP. And then there's just the daily stuff for people who are crazy. Um, so yeah, we're going to be playing roleplay uh, because I do want like the actual gameplay experience. Um, and not just to play it as an exploratory RPG. Granted, if you just want to play this game as like an RPG, this is the way to do it, is just put the game on Wander and experience the wonderful writing that this game has. But... What's the whole freak out with, with Woke? Uh, Fearmongering. And uh, people are very easily made afraid of change. And... The term woke has been co-opted uh, from its original meaning of awareness uh, to simply mean thing that certain group don't like. And if it's thing that certain group don't like, uh, they get mad when people promote that thing. So, because everything that is that is bad, according to their political ideology or their political stupidity. One of the two, depending on what you uh, prefer. So we're going to be building a character. Um, I think, well, we're going to be playing a mutant tell you that the question is what do we go with uh we were goofing off with arcanaut graybeard i think could be fun plus 100 reputation with bears just berate people um so i normally end up doing pretty squishy espers that's what i generally end up playing you finally did it earlier this week you managed to install linux from scratch with the world's hardest to install linux distribution Chat, can I get a golf clap for IHQMD? Yeah, because it's 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 an absolutely terrible um, form of arguing. But anyway, we can just leave that subject on in the ditch for now. Um, Roleplay would be fun to show off what actual high-end Esper ends up like. We could do... I mean, I, I can... I've pulled off... Okay, so I, I had a level 40 Esper in a in a roleplay run. Like, I, I can I can build Espers. Like, if you want... If you want an Esper run, we could do that. Um, we could absolutely do that. Like, we could do a Tinker Esper. I could just go Scholar. Um... Actually, just a Nomad would probably be a pretty good run option. 
to build into an Esper. No, we're not going with random mutations. Oh, wait, how, how did I make it? Well, I didn't do any of the main quest for one thing. I think I'm kind of, if, if we're gonna do an Esper, I think I'm kind of between. Ooh, actually, you know, you know what could be fun? An Esper Warden and try and get Warden Familiars. That could actually be really fun. Because we'd be relatively tanky off the bat because we, we start off with, you know, shield, long blade and shield slam, bow and rifle. So we'd have a lot of combat options. Hmm. Anything you can't hate to death with brain lasers you can throw grenades at. And I'm I'm kind of between these two. Between Tinker and Esker. Esther. I've done too many gunslinger espers. I the thing is I can make almost anything into a gunslinger eventually. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't really want to do a gunslinger. Not, not this run. Mostly because in order to do a gunslinger well, I basically need wings, and I don't like wings. Depends on what type of esper you want to be. Yeah, it, 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 do we want to be more crafting and c crafting consumable items, or do we want to be more of a combat character with spells. So ba basically, do we want to be like, do we want to be NG from TF2 or do we want to be, oh, I, I don't really have a good TF2 analogy for this one. I haven't drank enough Red Bull. That's why I don't like wings. We can have brain lasers either, either way. So, so do we, do we want to be like an engineer type character or do we want to be like a bruiser that also has mind powers? Do we want to, do we want to be a guy that throws grenades, sets mo traps and bombs and like has guns probably, or do we want to be a guy with a sword and guns and also mind powers? And, but they both get mind powers. Ba basically an engineer mage or a sword here, mage. A sword. Yeah. Engineer or sword mage? En engineer, NG mage or sword mage? I, yeah, I don't know. Always when I play cud, uh, makes you want a mutant crawl. Okay. Mm. Artificer. Yeah, actually, kind of artificer. NG or artificer? Hmm. Well, actually, no, artificer doesn't really have a sword. NG artificer is just a mage. I don't know if that's a. This is this is this is tricky, because I know I'm going to be playing this character for the next thirty hours. I think the reputation with Fellowship of Wardens could be really interesting, and I can go down the Tinkering Tree regardless. Yeah, true. Tinker is more mad scientist. I I can make basic. I can do ba I can I can do crafting with either one. Let's go with the Warden, just for the the 300 reputation with wardens because very that i would I, I need what 500 reputation to really be able to get a familiar i wouldn't need to do that many water rituals with wardens so let, let's go with the warden now the fun bit i'm going to not make us a chimera or esper i don't think i mean I am not. So here's the thing, right? This is a roleplay run. 
I'm not going with unstable genome because I want to be able to build a viable build. Because we're doing a roleplay run, if I go with unstable genome, you know what'll happen, right? I'm going to end up with a really weird, strange character that I don't have much control over. So, no. Uh, absolutely not, Aced. No. <laughs> absolutely not. No, this is a open world roguelike. It's got absolutely nothing to do with RimWorld. No, I mean, what what you're thinking of is... Oh, God, what's the name of that stupid... Chat, what was the name of that game that's basically just, like, top-down Terraria, but it, everything looks like RimWorld? Fuck, what's that game? I've played it. I've streamed it. I have no idea what that is. Nope, nope, nope. It's not Nassis. It's not Nassis. There's another one. Which I which I own. <laughs> I'm scrolling through my Steam library right now to try and find it. Nope, it's not Core Keeper. That's another one that it's not. There's one that literally just looks like RimWorld. Like it, it has the RimWorld graphic style, right, right down to like the base level. I'm literally going through open world survival crafting games on Steam right now. <laughs> I'll find this. Nope, it's not Stardius. No, you control one character. Escapist, nope. Kep, Kerplerth, yeah, that's it. Is it Keplerth? Yeah, it's Keplerth. This would be if uh, 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 RimWorld was an adventure mode type game. <laughs> Dull dog shit and not good replayability, clunky combat, and looks ugly. Um, that's the game I was thinking of. And it has mixed reviews. Yeah, that fits. <laughs> no, the C Caves of Cud is a open world RPG. It's got absolutely nothing in common with RimWorld whatsoever. Or adventure mode, really, for that matter. Aside from that, they're both open world, like, PGs, basically. Anyway, sorry for that, like, tangent. I had to remember the name of that game. Yeah, I don't want to do Unstable Genome. No, I'm not doing that. Um... Kind of thinking about just taking regen. Man, psychometry would, would be nice. This isn't very flashy, but... I have a question. Why are you trying to get me to ruin my run, Shira? I mean, if you want to ruin your own run, you can do that on your own time, and that is absolutely fine. But I don't want to ruin my run, so if you would like to ruin your run, by all means, ruin it. Then stop asking me to take terrible decisions. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're just going to go hard, full, full on Esper. It's super fun. Well, I mean, if you would like to run a full run of the game with Evil Twin on, on roleplay, you're more than welcome to use that. I have absolutely no desire to use that. All right. So if you would like to ruin your own run and get into endgame, you only meet it once. Well, I would prefer to meet it never. So, no, I if, if you really would like to ruin your own run, then by all means, put in things that make it significantly less interesting. Your bird is trying to steal your pasta. If I was your bird, I would also be trying to steal your pasta. Maybe it's time to feed your bird. Evil Twin is difficult. The goal of this run, for full clarity, to those of you who um, aren't listening, I suppose, or maybe just got here, we're playing on roleplay 
so that I can save at towns so that I can see the new content. So I'm not putting goofy shit into my character because I want to be able to make it to endgame. A lot of these debuffs are for if you're playing on classic and you want dumb shit to happen for the entertainment value. I don't particularly want dumb shit to happen because instead of the character dying and starting over, it's just going to waste my time, which isn't fun when the goal of the run is to see the content, right? If the goal of the run is to entertain yourself because you've seen everything already, then that makes a lot of sense. But if the goal of why it ruins the run, I don't want to make the run unnecessarily difficult. The goal is to see the new content, my dude. It's not just a clone of you. Yeah, specifically really difficult to kill clone of you. And I am not going to take any defects because I don't want my run to be unnecessarily difficult for absolutely no logical reason. And also, stop asking me to take things that I haven't said I'm going to take, all right? Like, your job as the audience is to play along and enjoy the stream, not say, are you going to intentionally make your run less fun for yourself? No, I'm not. In fact, that is absolutely not something and if you would like to enjoy your own run that is intentionally as difficult as you want it to be, then you can do that. I don't want to do that. Because I know for a fact there are multiple dungeons in this game that are multiple hours long. And if I'm heading towards the final room of one of these dungeons and an evil twin pops out and throws a, a, like a, a nuke at me because I happen to have nukes in my inventory, there's nothing fun about that. That's just wasting my time and wasting the audience's time. If I'm doing a challenge run because I've beaten the game 11 times and I'm going through the content again and I want to make it harder on myself, certainly, yes, that is something we can talk about. It's fun for you? No, it's not when I instantly end the stream because I'm so mad. And if that is the only reason you are here, go watch a different channel because I don't let myself do that, because I don't like that. I mean, you can clone yourself, so that's kind of a good twin option. You can clone yourself and then mind control your clone. So, now that we're done talking about the things that I'm not going to do, let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to take light manipulation, because I like to see in the dark. Um, literally all of these are good in their own weird way. Force bubble is a safe escape, which is good. We have seven points. Sundermind, stunning force, both very useful. Space time vortex, also useful. You're still not sure what this game is? It's an open world roguelike. It's a massive open world procedurally generated RPG. The RPG itself is about, well, 20 to 30 hours long, depending on how much you mainline it. You could play the evil twin. I think we already are the evil twin. You would rather have a literal Kindle in-game over the Kindle mutation? When you say Kindle, you mean like a Kindle reader? Or like Kindling? Do I like Mental Mirror? Sometimes, but probably not on this build. Because I do have guns. Um, but anyway, th this game, it's a, it's a top-down, like, originally ASCII open-world roguelike with a very, very, very large story in it. The world is kind of a mashup. Uh, well, I mean, I could just say Gamma World, but like the five people in this chat who know what Gamma World are is, I love you guys, but like realize that most people don't know what a Gamma World is. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a mashup of Dune, uh, Alice in Wonderland, and maybe a bit of Adventure Time, but taken extraordinarily seriously. Everybody under the age of, like, 40 probably doesn't know what Gamma World is. Good evening, Stone. Hello. <laughs> That's, I just, probably being really mean now. Um, but yeah, Mental Mirror can be good. When you suffer mental attacks, uh, while, mi while, men while Mirror is off cooldown, you gain four mental armor. Uh, if the attack then fails to penetrate your armor, it is reflected back at the attacker. 
live and drink, friend. See, so yeah, a mental mirror could be good. I mean, it's it's only two points. Um, we I basically, if you're going Esper, the only so there's there's for for people who've never seen Cud before, there's two types of mutate. There's two types of characters you can play. You can play as a cyborg or a mutant. The cyborgs they get abilities by finding implants in the world, and then uh, using special currency that you can find in the world to upgrade your implants, basically. So you find implants, you uh, install implants, and then you upgrade those implants within the world. Then there's mutants, which start off a lot weaker than the cyborgs. The cyborgs, which are called Trukin, uh, start off a lot stronger. The initial first few leveling, por leveling portion of the game is a lot easier, but you plateau a lot quicker, and getting to end game is harder because you need to find some pretty specific artifacts which can be difficult to get, or implants, rather. Um, I, am, I I will talk about that in a second as well, hell. Uh, and no, I am not going to take Unstable Genome. Stop asking. I want to be able to build. I don't want to be forced into random builds. So I am not taking Unstable Genome. So um, when, uh, when you play as a mutant, there's, I guess, kind of three kinds of mutants you could play. You could play a combo mutant, which gets both mental and physical mutations. You can play an Esper, which only gets mental mutations, or you can play as a Chimera, which only gets physical mutations. I am playing an Esper, so I'm basically going to be a Mind Powers wizard. I could take Unstable Genome, but that basically ruins your ability to build mut the, 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 to, to pick, I pick abilities for your build. Um, so I'm not going to take that. What if you want to be like Wolverine? I mean, I'm not going to be like Wolverine, but if you want to be like Wolverine, I guess you take what? Regen? Double muscled? It really isn't like a claws ability. But yeah, I guess regen and double muscled. Maybe. I guess you I, you could take burrowing claws, but that's not really like a weapon. That just makes me. Burrowing claws is like frustrating for me because whenever I take burrowing claws, I accidentally dig through walls I wasn't intending to. Um. I guess Adrenal Control is also pretty Wolverine. So yeah, like, b b Adrenal Control, Burrowing Claws, and then Double Muscled, basically. I don't know. But anyway, um, ba essentially mental mutations are like magic powers, right? So you, you there's like a, a AoE Confusion. Uh, precognition lets you like see into the, a certain number of turns into the future and then jump back to it. Um, ma mass Mind. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Um basically like gives you uh mental abilities from other mental power people that are in the vicinity essentially uh kindle starts a fire uh, the interesting thing with kindle because somebody in chat said that they would rather have a real life kindle than the kindle upgrade there's a lot of enemy types in this game that are what's the word terrified of fire so this is actually like a fear tactic and can actually be quite useful, especially in early game. Because you can't light a campfire when there's enemies in the vicinity and there's a bunch of enemy types that will run away from fire if they see fire. So this essentially lets you um, put down a little fire so they run away. It's like a free fear, essentially, on certain types of enemies. Upgrade mental mirror, or is it one of those mutations that you can't level up? It's been too long. I, I can't remember. Precog is not a quick save. It is not a quick save. And people call it that. It is not that. Precog lets you decide if you want to jump back once. It's like... Describing it as a quick save is a, is a bad way to describe it because it's really not that. Space-time vortex makes, lets you make black holes, which are very unwieldy and can teleport you places. We could take space-time vortex if you guys want a silly ability. Um, teleport others useful, just normal teleportation is also useful. Actually, man, teleportation can be fun. It does. I, I think when you say it's... Calling it a, a quick save, though, I think maybe over exaggerates what it is 
Yeah, that's what precog's useful. It's, it's useful to see if a hole is too deep, to, deep enough to kill you. I don't think we need precognition because this is a, re a, a replay run, a role play run. I'm kind of tempted to take clairvoyance. Domination is also useful because it like basically forces things to join you for a bit. <laughs> um, but then you lose control of your own body and then your body can die. Clairvoyance, Sundermind is silly. Oh, I'd believe that. Because you, what, just, just clair, clair, clairvoyance and then boom. Sunder the minding, mind of an enemy, leaving them reeling in pain. For up to 10 rounds, you engage in psychic combat with an opponent. You know, actually, that might be... Maybe that's, maybe that's the play. Sense psychic, clairvoyance, Sundermind. What was beguiling? Beguiling um, forces a weaker creature to join you. Domination allows you to take control of a stronger character temporarily. Uh, burgeoning is, is a fun one, yeah, because it just summons a bunch of plants. So this, this combination essentially lets me shoot lasers out of my eyes, see through walls, or sense psychic creatures through walls, um, see through walls temporarily, and allows me to attack things through walls with my brain. I think everything that's alive in this world is just an abomination. <laughs> Void lock. Most of your um, promising runs ended getting sundered. Really? I'm not figuring out a way to get out of it. The thing about getting sundered is if you're getting sundered, they can see you, right? So if they can see you, you can see them, probably. And then all you really need to do is kill the thing that's sundering you. But yeah, sundering is pretty, pretty nutty. And also we are a warden, meaning I'm going to start with pretty decent base stats, but I'm gonna have to tech into the mind powers pretty heavily. So this is our stat selection. Um, strength determines how effectively you penetrate your opponent's giggity armor uh, with melee attacks and how much damage your melee attacks do and your ability to resist forced movement, like getting, you know, knocked back and whatnot. Uh, and your ability to resist uh, forced movement in your carry capacity. So we want like at least 16 or eh, probably 18 strength. Agility score determines your accuracy with both melee and ranged weapons and your ability to dodge attacks. Toughness determines your, your number of hit points and your natural healing weight rate and your ability to resist poison and disease. Uh, intelligence uh, score determines your number of skill points and your ability to examine artifacts. Your willpower score modifies the cooldown of your activated abilities and determines your ability to resist mental attacks. Willpower, very important. Uh, and modifies your natural healing rate. And ego score determines the potency of your mental mutations and your ability to haggle with merchants and your ability to dominate the wills of other living creatures. It also um, notifies intergalactic time Nazis of your current location if you level it up too much. <laughs> Also need to note that, so, um, or rather, it's more more interdimensional, more interdimensional. So, uh, if you turn, if you level that, if you level that ability up, uh, you'll start getting attacked by interdimensional time Nazis that want to kill you. Um, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Wear your tinfoil hat, kids. Don't go big of it. Don't get too big of an ego. Well, I mean, we need a big of an ego because a lot of my damage is going to come from that. Um, willpower, we want to level up. Uh, intelligence, we definitely want to level up. Uh, toughness, we need. I think agility is going to be the one that's like a little bit neglected here. But I want to see if I can get it up just a little bit. I'm going to be putting points into agility probably. It's too many 17s. Um, initially, they're not too hard to just run away from. They're also not too hard to kill, but they get strong 
quick. But I generally, the, I guess the way it works if you're, is if you're building your character correctly, um, they are defeatable, essentially. It, it, what what uh, Dart kind of said, like that that is very much true. Um, so it's basically like you, your mind becomes powerful enough that things from other dimensions can see you, and then they teleport in and try and kill you. It's pretty obvious when it happens. You get a pop up, and you basically just need to leave the map. So it's it's not too hard to get away from them unless they're in a dungeon with you, and then it's scary. In comparison to Boogeyman, how strong are they? I'm not going to start comparing things to Adventure Mode because the combat, uh, the... Just just remember this. Adventure Mode uses a physics system for its combat. This uses, like, a D&D &D derivative of dice rolls. So nothing is really comparable to Boogeyman because nothing really plays like Boogeyman. Um... I would say in roguelike terminology, the mental glimmer is like running. Do you, do you guys know what um, like the concept of an out of level enemy is? It's when you run in when you're playing a dungeon crawler, and you run into an enemy. Like let's say you're playing a dungeon crawler, right? And you're on level two of the dungeon, and mostly what you're running to into is level three to five goblins, and your character is a level four. So everything is like killable, more, more or less. The level five goblins, you kind of need to try a little bit, but like you, with the correct tactics, you can take them out. It's not it's not too difficult, right? And then suddenly you run into a level 14 orc. That's an out of level enemy. So it's like a stronger enemy type from deeper in the dungeon that's early for design purposes as a challenge. Um, that's what the mental glimmer is, basically. It's like running into out-of-level enemies, where you are under-leveled to fight them. You might be able, you can probably kill them if you use all of your items and abilities correctly, but it's probably better to just run away, right? That's kind of what the mental glimmer stuff is, where it's like, yeah, you can probably fight them usually. Is it smarter to run away? Do you, should you just run away? Yeah, yeah, you should. You should just run away. True. Yeah, I, I'm not super. Um, I'm not super uh, knowledgeable on Warhammer stuff. Um. So yeah, I think this will work. I think this will work. I kinda I drop my agility, increase my toughness by one. I drop my intelligence and increase my toughness by one. Do they have good rewards if you murder them? I mean, everything drops items. So, yep. <laughs> Nothing? What? I I don't know why it's bad. What what why is it who says it's bad, Lanix? Also, what game are you talking about? <laughs> I need to like are you talking about Caves of Cud or are you talking about Dwarf Fortress right now? Sorry, I'm I'm in mostly a Caves of Cud mood today. Yeah, I I I'm I'm going to assume that people are talking about Cud cuz I'm playing Cud. Um all right, so there there is a rule that I have when I'm playing Cud. If I, or roguelikes in general, actually. If I am playing a character that happens to be um, a tourist or a, uh, what's the word? Saving build, I name it Yours the Tourist. So we are going to be Yours the Tourist. And uh, for anybody who, who wants, um, in my Discord, there's a Caves of Cud thread in the Games Talk forums, and uh, that's my character code. And also, if you pay too much money for your subscription, you may have a tourist emote. No, you're not building your character wrong. You're building your character exactly the way you want to build it.
We are yours, the tourist. So for those of you who missed this, this is my second iteration of yours, the tourist. We did a tourist run when they added the tomb of the or no it, it was the patch it was the arc patch after the tomb of the eaters we we did a tourist run right when they added the role play mode um and made it all the way to the end of the game at that point and i want to say it took me about 25 hours so we're going to do that again so this is the second version of Eurist the Tourist. Uh, Eurist is the most common dwarf name in Dwarf Fortress. Um, and the Tourist, while it rhymes nicely, uh, I am a guy who streams a lot of Dwarf Fortress. So Eurist is apt and Tourist, well, we're a tourist because this is a tourist mode. And the term Tourist comes from NetHack. So NetHack has a, uh, has a, uh, a mode called Tourist where you can save and mo and things do way less damage. And the idea is you just see the game. So, because that would be too punny even for me, some fool. But you, you can affectionately refer to yours, the tourist as that. You can also reheal your tongue by uh, using an uber nostrum. And also then finding the book that cure that'll give you the instructions to cure glot rot and then curing glot rot. You're the cultist? That doesn't really rhyme though. Does it? It's a stretch for rhyming. I couldn't tell you, Krampus. After all of the happening, you're getting attacked by about 20 guards of mine. But yeah, anyway, Lennox, there's absolutely nothing wrong about Brackish Lake Ocean biome. I, I don't know why you're asking what's so bad about it. He, he, here's the thing with uh, DF questions, Lennox. If you start it with what's so bad about it, I don't know who's saying it's bad, why people are telling you it's bad. There's probably a specific reason for it, but I don't know what the entire basis of the question is. So I, there's no way for me to actually answer that. So if you say, why is this thing bad? I mean, it's not. I mean, the water isn't drinkable. I guess that's bad. Why are you asking if it's bad? Who told me, who told you it was bad? Is I guess where my brain goes. So like, there's like a, no way for me to actually answer that question. Um, anyway, let's play this. Uh, we're gonna start in the starting town, which is Yapa instead of a randomly generated one because we want all the uh, starting quests as is because I want the writing in its uh, normal format because there's a lot of new writing. Then it generates the world and we get a quote. From the Fuming God Sea Shanty. Black devils swing from starry masts beneath the yawning moon. Which is a, a, a sea shanty. Fine. On the 24th of Tishru 2? I, I? I don't know. Uh, UX, you arrive on the at the oasis hamlet of... Yes, I know that's ass in... Russian. Anyway, you 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 arrive in the oasis hamlet of Yapa. Uh, every single time I do this, I get like thirty comments reminding me that it's ass in Russian, and I, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, of of Yapa, along the far rim of of the Megora Yi and the Great Salt Desert, all, all around you, moisture farmers tend to groves of Viridian water vine, and there are huts wrought from rock. Salt and brine stock. UGDPY, thank you very much for the t gift pack of 10 subscriptions and the first notification of money in 52 minutes. I appreciate you. It means a lot, dude. It means a lot. Thanks for continuing to support this stream, as you do. On the horizon, cuds jungles strangle chrome steeples and rusted archways. And the, uh, and, uh, <laughs> strangle chrome steeples and rusted archways to the earth, and further and beyond the fabled spindle rises above the fray and pierces the cloud-ribbon sky. Sometimes I do a really good job reading that, and then sometimes I just completely fumble it. This time I completely fumbled it. Uh, welcome to Cud. I will zoom in so that you guys don't get like, you know, completely lost. I am this little duder. This me. Um, I can move around. It's, uh, it's a pretty good time. Uh, that This guy here um, is, uh, is the zealot. Nobody likes the zealot. He preaches! the chromatic gospel of the mechanimists and precious saliva flies from his cracked lips but he's too wrapped in the music of his words to notice 
nobody likes the nobody likes the zealot. zealot. Um, I'm gonna move my cam. Uh, am I blocking anything? Chat, am I blocking any of the UI? My my camera previews are very small. I don't I don't want to be blocking anything, but I can always just prefer when when I need it. Um, so over here on the side we have our 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 uh, log of things that are happening. I can I can move around as, as I want. Um, or pop this up and then you guys can see what's actually happening in the background. Um, everything in Caves of Cut, if you hit the look button, um, has di like a description and the descriptions are awesome. I do recommend if you are new to Cud uh, to use this. Apparently this game has controller support now, which is native. I don't know how well that works. Um, word of advice though, uh, do not ever look at the apple farmer's daughter. Just don't do it. Trust me. Do not do it. Do not look at the apple farmer's daughter. So if, 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 if you hit L on the keyboard or use the look command in this game and you look at the apple farmer's daughter, you get the lovesick debuff which basically makes you like extraordinarily mentally weak. It like it nerfs your ego and your intelligence down to almost nothing. So and your willpower down to almost nothing. So if you get breathed on by a mental attack, you just insta die and it lasts for like a week in game. <laughs> it lasts for a really long time. So you get love sick. Um although I guess you could like stab her with a love injector and make her fall in love with you, but like Anyway, it seems really playable. Awesome. Yeah, I, I am, I'm not a controller person at all. I will, I will, I will play with my, with my uh, numpad and keyboard until I die. But you love the new cut update. You've never heard of the apple farmer's daughter thing. Uh, she usually the apple farmer. There. Okay, there was one. Okay, so true story. The randomly, th this is the default starting town, right? So the, all these characters are designed. Um, all of the quest givers that you'll discover are designed and written characters. Um, but you can start in randomly generated villages. I once, and it just gives you like basically random characters for the randomly generated villages. There was one time I was in a, in, in a town entirely made up of the apple farmer's daughter, which was very funny because I, I took one look and I was like, oh God, they're all the apple farmer's daughter. What happens if I look at them all? And I looked at all of them and my ego and intelligence dropped so low I died. So, <laughs> um, yeah. One of the shortest runs of cut I've ever done, but holy shit! <laughs> died of love. I literally got so lovesick I died. It's like waking up. It's like literally death by snooze stew. It's like waking up in like an army of Amazons and like looking around and being like, ah, and then having a heart attack basically. <laughs> um. So Over yeah. Over here, he has a sword. Over here, she's beautiful. Um. So we're gonna speak with the first character. This is. Uh, Mahmet, who, whose description, who, by the way, is impossible for me to kill, is loved by the villagers of Yapa, disliked by bears for reprogramming their favorite robot, and uh, hated by the villagers of Quazoth for burning one of their leaders in effigy. And uh, their description is, years of desert have taken their toll on his body, but he commands your ear with a voice like few other men. And you wonder, what sovereignty might he have come from? Were he not born... A, mar a moisture farmer. And also, um, we do run automated ads on this channel. When ads hit, if I'm in dialogue, I'll stop reading. And um, if something interesting is happening, I, I, I will just wait, because it is a turn-based game, right? Do you get something after all that time? Nope. You just learn not to look at the apple farmer's daughter, which is why you don't look at the apple farmer's daughter. I like that you can die to psychological stuff. There is, a, there is a, there is an item that you can equip that gives you mind death too. Um, there is a certain item that you can equip that will make your brain. Actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if using that item you could like hard lock a role play run. Like if you, if you get that item from that quest and equip it. and then go to a town and get a save. Huh. <laughs> hmm. 
Now I actually wonder. When you play Cud, you miss the blind narration. Yeah, the amaranthine prism. That's that's what I'm. I'm trying not to like directly spoil things, but yeah, if you if you equip that, you you believe it would, huh? Hard lock pick. I I mean, I'm not going to hard lock this run, but I mean, it'll do that quest and complete it the way you're supposed to. Basically, there's an item that you can equip. If you equip it, you cannot unequip it, and it basically just makes you go insane. Cheers, Big Sparn. No, I'm I'm just amused because I realize I just realized a way to hard lock a, a roleplay run even with saving. Um anyway, let, let's let's go through this. Live and drink, friend. May you find shade in Yappa. What can you tell me about Yappa? Well, speak with the elder up north. And look for his hut. And then I'm looking for work. You know, I was just getting into reading, and you're like, just... Caught one of your streams again, finally. Mate. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for the hundred bucks. <laughs> well, complain to that. Appreciate you, dude. Holy shit. It's good to see you too, Bane. But yeah, I think the last time you saw me was like right after I got back from TwitchCon, right? Because you popped into the YouTube chat, I think. Which, by the way, I'm not streaming on YouTube today. This is a Twitch exclusive. At least for right now. But thank you very much for the $100. I, I appreciate you greatly. And, uh, chat room, just hold one up for Bane. Because keeping this channel funded. You, B, Suited Giraffe, UGDPY with the 10 gift subs earlier. Everybody for their resubs. Hey, Pablo, if you want the character build, it's um, it's in the Caves of Cud room on the Discord in the uh, ca Caves of Cud portion of the forum. Because there's a Caves of Cud thread on the forum on my Discord. God, that's complicated to say. Anyway, the, the character code's in there if you want to use it. Um, some critters are eating our water vine. Farouk claims he saw one slinking around the vine patch. Ugly little thing. He says, pale, white, eight legs, and an ear-splitting wine. I noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool, and the same we find in the soil at nearby ca at the nearby cave to the north we call Red Rock. Travel to Red Rock and kill as many of these critters as you can and bring back the corpse of one. The elder will reward you for your efforts. And I will accept the task. What this game looks like, Baba is you? You know, there there is actually there's actually a Baba is you skin which is just this game. <laughs> It's like this game's tile set. So now if I hit Q on the keyboard, we have our our uh, quest log here, which tells us to travel to Red Lock. Red, 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 Red Lock? Hmm. Red Rock, which I'm not actually even sure which one of these buttons it is. <laughs> Wait menu, look. Wait, I need toggle, minimap, toggle, blah, 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 blah. Auto explore, character sheet. Actually, it, where is the button on this UI? I like don't mouse control this game ever, so. Anyway, it's just, it's Q here. Um, this is our character sheet. This is what we're playing. We're an Esper with Clairvoyance, Light Manipulation, and Sense Psychic, and Sundermind! Get Sundered, son. Um, I need to check my inventory, because I don't actually know what I have. Okay, so currently we're wearing leather armor. We've got an iron buckler, an iron longsword, a lit torch, which I can I can remove from my inventory, and um, leather moccasins. You love the art style I went with? You can also play it in ASCII. Um, if you uh, go to the options and you just type in tiles and you turn that off, you can also play the game like this if you are a awesome person. Uh, you can also turn on the old UI if you want a more ASCII-esque UI. No pants? Who needs pants? No pants, no care. Although I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure my leather armor has like pants built in, but... Uh, and then we're wearing shoes. At least we have shoes. Often I start without shoes. Um, now I have nothing on. Let's fix that. Um, so we, in our inventory, we have witchwood bark, a bunch of torches, some water. Water is money. Okay? Water is money. 
What's my highest level? I got to I got an Esper up to level 40 once without doing any of the main quest line. That's the highest level. With doing the main quest line, I got a mutant bur like uh, just normal mutant with a combination of powers up to level I think it was like we were in the mid 30s by the time I finished the game. So, but uh, this is a role play run, so uh, I can save it towns. So this is a town that we are at right now. This is like I said, Yappa. So you can save it, Yappa. I'm also like debating maybe like getting my editor to edit this entire series up and put it up as a let's play on the main YouTube channel, but I'm worried nobody will watch it and it would cost me kind of a lot of money to get him to edit all of that. So I don't know if I want to do that, but we can kind of walk around this not covered by my camera, but this is Argvi. He's another quest giver. And there's the most important character in the entire town. The most important one. The cat. We're going to give a pet. And we pet him. And he meows. And then we start to glow. Because this cat makes you glow in the dark when you pet it. <laughs> Not actually joking. We, we are now phosphorescent. Um... One star-ribboned night, a ray cat crossed the marshy loam and wandered into Yampa, the water vine farmers wakened by the joyful cries of a small girl, gathered around to revel at the favorable omen, an exitol, and the generosity of the beetle moon. Since then, Sisyphus has spent his days curled under the shade of brinestalk huts. Sauntering over the dirt paths, so long as he's approached with care, he welcomes hands of friends and strangers alike. Are, are lakes banks? Only if it's fresh water. Only fresh water is money. So it has to be drinkable fresh water. Which is pretty rare. So if you'll see this right now, um, this is the elder. Uh-oh. Oh, I see. What a, too far over. This is the elder. We can't see him right now, but because I have sense psychic, I can sense him because the Elder has psychic powers. Speaking of uh, powers, we have the Warden here. Big Ureg shifts his weight between his hands and forelegs. He shakes dander off the chipped surface of his great curling horns that spry from his temples. One hand holds a purring blade, the other lame and frostbitten. It reminds us that while Mother Nature may bestow splendid gifts upon her children, she is still the sister to cruelty. Loved by the Fellowship of Wardens, we, since we are a warden, we need to uh, have a water ritual with them. And admired by the villagers of Yapa for defending their village. These physical features are horns and icy vapor. And he, he's equipped with chainmail, a weird artifact, and leather boots. And he says, Ain't day wishing the heart keep pumping? Move along, if day do. Say thank you for the Dwarf Fortress, guys. Your first Fortress tutorial. Let's play uh, and quick guides help you a lot. Hell yeah! Happy to be of service. Chat room. And at some point, I swear, there will be an equal number of guides for adventure mode. And also this game, once they hit 1.0. Thanks for the 15th month, Sam. Cheers, dude. Okay. I would honestly say uh, jugs of and barrels of water are more savings accounts than lakes. So we're going to do the water ritual with them. Or we can just say nothing in response. Also, I have to say that w this warden speaks a lot like the way stone does. Um, so your thirst is mine and my water is yours. So the water ritual is basically like a sign of friendship. And what's funny is if you're trying to do the water ritual with robots, you have to use oil. Because they don't drink water, they drink oil. <laughs> um, and then there are certain other characters that you need, like, other liquids for this. You don't know about that? I mean, not obviously it's not identical, but reading this kind of text reminds me of the way you speak sometimes. So, um, we're going to give them one dram of water to begin the water ritual. And this gives you a huge amount of re uh, reputation with that faction, basically. Um, so our reputation with the Fellowship of Wardens is increased by 100, and we are now favored with the Wardens. So whenever I run into a Warden, if I do a water ritual with them, I will get a influx, basically, of um, 
um, favor from that faction. Is it like a tip? Not really. It's more of just a, a sign of friendship, basically. And um, we're stuck in an ad for the next three minutes, but if I press enter on this screen, it takes us to this. Because they admire Warden Ulreg, the villagers of Yop... Uh, the villagers of Yapa uh, are, uh, what's the word? Reputation with Yapa increased by 100, now to minus 40. And now we get this menu. If I get enough reputation, depending on my intelligence and the amount of favor I have, I think it's intelligence, um, I can sacrifice that reputation to either learn stuff, learn skills, or um, get them to join me. And my goal is to get some wardens to join me, so I need a lot more reputation with them. A lot more reputation. And I need a warden that likes me too. So I could learn secrets, which will be like locations of things. It could be like um, uh, where an item is, uh, where a dungeon is, where a neutral town is, those kinds of things. Um, the abilities will be like, oh, can you teach me how to parry? It, it, it'll be like, oh, can you teach me um, a specific thing from the skill tree? Can you teach me this kind of tinkering? Or can you teach me a recipe for a thing? Can you teach me how to cook something? Um, so the water ritual can be very useful. And it's what I would describe as like a old school RPG mechanic where like you pay a dude and they give you a skill up, basically. Which just like start producing lots of weapons and materials so you can go get gear for your dude. I mean, that, that's a very common thing in old school BF is I'm just gonna make a tiny fort that just produces steel weaponry and then go get it. You know, it's funny. I require uh, insulin to live and I need water or I need money to pay for it. So it's kind of like having prescription meds. Kind of, not really. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we did the water ritual. Um, I think actually the, the, the best game, if you want to realize what needing money to not die is, is probably Citizen Sleeper. Citizen Sleeper was incredible. If you like good writing in video games. Oh God, Citizen Sleeper was something. Uh, and then he says, ain't day wish in the heart, and then we can continue on. So let's keep wandering around a little bit. Over here, because I haven't auto explored, we haven't seen this yet. Over here is a, uh, a shrine. So shrines are interesting. Um, you can look at them, which uh, teaches us about one of... So I realize that I'm over-explaining everything and taking a lot of... Taking my time with this and doing this really slowly. Is this uh, a playthrough style you guys like for this kind of thing? Because I just kind of work with the assumption that nobody watching me knows how to play CUD. I realize that there, there's probably some of you that are like better at this game than me. But I feel like whenever I'm stripping cut, I just have to like be really slow and explain literally everything, which is good because I'm not going to die and lose all of this progress in this run. Um, but uh, so in Caves of Cut, when the when the world generates, um, when the world generates at the beginning, which is that thing with the, the the bars filling, it's not like Dwarf Fortress World Gen where it gives you a completely new map, right? It's not like that. It scrambles locations of things. Story and quest locations are always in the same place. I I mean, I have one from three months ago, which is still... I, I have an over-explained Let's Play of me getting through the first three dungeons on YouTube. And... I, I'm pretty sure that that is still up to date, even with this patch. Even though it's a patch behind now, but... The statue is random? No, that is not true. This statue is not random. It is always the shrine to Recef, the last sultan. This statue is always the same. Gloves, what's up? But anyway, um, so in, in the world of Caves of Cud, uh, there are the sultans, which are like the great leaders from the past. The vast majority of them are random every single run. So the names, locations, um, how they got into power, all like the history of the world is scrambled, but it always starts and ends in the same place. Basically, so it goes out and then back in. This is one of the written characters who's the same every single time. There are a few of those. Yes. 
which leads to the quest of, of Red Rock. Yeah, absolutely. Big simple. Also, you're you're the you. I I know you. You you're in the uh, Creator Refuge Discord, and uh, hide on on YouTube making cut videos. This this person's actually got good tutorials. <laughs> for cud i was recommending you earlier you're that guy yeah i'm the dwarf fortress guy and you're the cud guy we should collab or some shit i don't know um but uh also rock cat what up especially if the vod is going on youtube oh god i mean the vods will go on youtube i just don't know which channel wow you both won 1400 how did you manage what how much did you bet devilish i'm curious how, how you got that 10 at the end there it must have been a weird number Seems like the character backgrounds are scrambled as well somewhat. I don't know if that's been fixed, but one time starting in Yappa, an opposing faction started killing everyone. That just happens sometimes. I don't know if that's something that they're trying to fix, but like, it's really funny when you start off and usually I find what happens in Yappa is if somebody's going to die, it's the zealot and it's very quick. Good night, Rock Cat. <laughs> Hi, Rock Cat. Bye, Rock Cat. Um,. Yeah, no, if someone's going to die in Yappa, it's probably 806 versus 800. Interesting. Um, it's probably the Zealot that's going to die. The number of times that, like, I've just shown up in Yappa and the Zealot just immediately gets instigived by somebody is, like, almost more often than not. And it's usually Argvi that kills the Zealot. <laughs> um, but there, there, there has been times where I've shown up in, um, like, Yappa, done a water ritual with somebody, and then come back and everybody's dead. But... It's a usually tested con in contested feature amongst the devs. I mean, I I've seen Mahmet die. For for me, if if a quest giver dies in the first ninety seconds of the game, there should be an alternate way to get that quest. That's my the whole town killed Argvine. Wait, really? <laughs> so like that. I I really like that as a feature. I think there should just be alternative ways to get the quests. Oh yeah, no, I did have the cat die. Yeah, no, I started. I can't. I can't remember who killed the cat, but somebody did kill the cat once. That was horrible. <laughs> I was like, oh god, not the cat. Why did you do that? Um, but yeah. Um. Anyway, this shrine depicts a significant event from the light from from the. Li hmm. This shrine depicts a significant event from the life of the ancient sultan, Recef. In three AR. Recef cleansed the marshlands of the plagues of gear and taught Abram to sow water vine along its fertile tracks. What, the cat dying, Stormwolf? <laughs> really? That's horrible. And then uh, this game has a magical feature, um, which some roguelikes have, and the ones that don't are bad. Auto-explore. If you can kill him, do you get the seed? I mean, if you can kill anybody, you will get the item in their inventory, yeah. But good luck. <laughs> um, also, something else about Yappa? Where is it? Where did they... Ah, there it is. There's a cave in Yappa. Which takes you to Red Rock, if you didn't know that. So, you can actually go to Red Rock underground. If you want to go to Red Rock in hard mode. So we've got the first quest, which is travel to Red Rock. We can go get the second quest, um, which is Argvi. And uh, the Elder appears to be going to bed because I've dawdled around so long in here. I don't think anybody is particularly good at Cud. Even people that are really knowledgeable about Cud aren't particularly good at Cud. Argvi is mumbling, and he says, Tinsel strength, uh, ruble on uh, lacking in dino, lacks density, and a retro thing in the abandoned front line. Oh, I didn't notice you there because I was ignoring you. And this was Space threads from the plant for a license solvent. And then I'm just sitting here and he keeps mumbling and he goes, a deviation of the client constant and then it clears throat loudly. <coughs> Must you disturb me? What are you, some sort of treasure hunter? Well, at the very least, make yourself useful and bring me a knickknack from one of those caves. I may reward you if I feel like it. Where are the caves? There's caves everywhere, you dolt. This is Cud. Try the rust wells just east of here. And I, as I respond, I will return with your knickknack. So I don't have any knickknacks right now. I could just, like, steal some knickknacks from the town, 
which is a perfectly viable option, but I am not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go purchase uh, some supplies, and we're going to head north to Red Rock. It is very easy to just steal stuff from the town. Very, very, very easy to just steal stuff from this town. A lacquered weird artifact. Interesting. Across the Macquarie E, Volume 3. Probably actually not going to buy much of anything. You've got acid. Why do you have acid? I don't think I've ever seen him with acid before. Um, so money is water, right? But you can also buy items like silver and copper nuggets. And you'll find silver and copper nuggets, which are basically just water that weigh less. <laughs> Essentially, it's money that you can't drink. So less useful money. Uh, it doesn't really have much that I need. Yeah, I guess we'll just head north then. I was thinking about buying some more Witchwood Bark, which is a healing item. But, uh, doesn't have any, so whatever. So each, this, okay, next thing I need to explain. This is the overworld for Cud. This, well, actually, here, we'll just hit this button so it's full screen. This is the overworld for Cud. This is static and does not change from run to run. However, this is a tile. Each tile is three by three by three squares. Those are all randomly generated. So it's not too far to get, I think it's three by three by three. Uh, it's not too far to get to Red Rock, which is our first quest location. But um, all of these locations are static and do not change from run to run. There are hidden locations that are somewhat generated that show up in almost every run if you can find them. And there's also um, hidden quest locations that are around the map that are gener that, that will be randomly generated. Also, each of these has, I don't even know how many levels of caves deep, so you can go down really, really, really deep, and things get meaner and scarier the deeper you, the deeper you go. Um, just watch the, wait, the one that I made? Rockner? What's with the rainbow area? The rainbow area is drugs. I love the rainbow area. The rainbow area, rainbow wood is maybe my favorite zone in the game. Um, it has one of the most convincing drug tri trips in a video game that I've ever done. Um, and as somebody who's taken mushrooms in real life, it, devs did a lot of research. <laughs> like a lot of research. Like, holy shit. Um, so you, you know those, you know those levels in, um, in uh, Legend of Zelda where... It's, it's, it's the forest areas, usually, where, like, you have to read the sign and follow the pattern, otherwise it's just infinite. Imagine that, but on steroids. And also, you're on a drug trip. You, you, so, you're high on mushrooms. And also... It, it's something. My guided playthrough. Yeah, I, I was very unhappy with how that turned out, but I, people have found it useful, so... But anyway, uh, that, that's that. So, and and like I said earlier, look at everything because everything has awesome dialogue and the dialogue's there, so read it. Um, so like the description of Yappa. Ants in the vir viridian chaff, the farmer's sap, the last drops of the pristine moisture out of the salt spangled earth. The areas that we're gonna be moving through are the stagnant pools of luminous lilies, complete with the ribbon of stars in the night sky under the salt sun. Though, they shrink into the shade of brine weed. A naturally redded outcropping of stone juts out of the salted crag is where we're headed. And don't look at the apple farmer's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you do, do not look at the apple farmer's daughter. So I can move on the overworld, but there's a high chance I'll get lost. So we're just going to drop back down to our current location. Let's zoom out ever so slightly. We're going to start walking. Offer really good opportunities to learn by example. Totally. And I'm happy they do that. All right, let's plop. Whoop. Nope. I'm still used to my own old-fashioned keybinds. Let's make us a real quick meal. I do this out of habit. I don't know if you actually need to do that. And then we're going to sleep until morning. And then I can wait a couple turns. 
might go back out. Now we're going to walk left one. So we're still in the Yapa zone, which is why this music is still playing. So we're still in the same zone. You can look around here and then head north. When I'm playing on my own time, I play all the way zoomed out because I like to be able to see the entire play field. But for you guys, because everything is very small when you do that, uh, we're just... <laughs> there's there's so many disclaimers with Caves of Crud. Do not the mushrooms is a good one, though. So here there is some more statues, as well as a glow pad, which is a leaf disc that gleams through luminous veins. And they get very mad if you kill fish. Oh, also you can um, desecrate statues, which you might not want to do, depending on who's in the vicinity. Uh, the shrine depicts a significant event from the life of the ancient sultan, Zershid. So this is a generated character. Deep in Tar Chipur, Zershid, or Zarshid, I don't even know, discovered a new manor. There he befriended dogs and stained a glass and a stained glass window. Befriended dogs and a stained glass window? Or did he stain a glass window? What I want to know is, did he become friends with the window? Or did he just stain a glass window? Because I've... Hmm. <laughs> it, it could... Could could be either? <laughs> playing on a 60-inch TV, you also got to zoom in. So small. I feel like playing this game fully zoomed out on a 60-inch TV would... If you're pretty close to the TV, it would be pretty optimal, actually. But... But we've discovered a location now, which is Tarchipper. Tarchipper? And we have a new quest, which is Visit Tarchipper. Let's see where it is. So if you hold down Alt, it'll show you points of interest. It'll also um, tell you if things are not friendly. Ooh, I never noticed that part. That particle effect must be new. So if I zoom out, you can see the points of interest. But this one with the glowy thingy on it is because I have a quest for there. So, um... Under the labyrinthine shade and nestled in the crumbling shale, here stretches the ancient theocracy, where middling classes strolled and sneered. We'll have to head there after Red Rock, see if we can explore around that area. And then we can go down here. We can go look at some gravestones. Well, that day. Here lies... Good luck pronouncing that. Died of natural causes. Boring. Buried alive by dogs. I would not want to be buried alive by dogs. They're very inefficient at digging, so that would take forever. Made too many mocking sounds at a cyclopean gibbon. Oh, boy. You know, that's, that's not a good way to go. Pushed off a cliff by a white eesh. Eesh. All right, well, let's head north. The stroll to Red Rock. So once again, if you, if you hit alt, uh, it'll show you... Who is friendly and who would not? If green, friendly. If red, run! Or fight. Whatever you prefer. Oh yeah, it's powerful. I just, I don't like the the way the flying mechanics work in this game. I find it clunky. Like, trust me, it, it's powerful. It's just clunky. Uh, so we need to level up a little bit. And one of the good ways to do that, at least if you're lazy like me, is punch some fish. <laughs> so I'm going to shoot some lasers at some fish uh, just until we hit level two. Um, because they stop giving you XP very quickly. Uh, but there's a luminescent flex beneath the water's surface. Uh, I will also piss off all the glow, glow pads when I do this. Um, so I, I, I can shoot lasers out of my eyes, which is pretty effective. Uh, just keep in mind, if you shoot lasers out of your eyes, it also destroys their, their gear. So, but, you know, it's a little bit of XP. I Doesn't this game have, like, cloud support? I have no idea, someone. Yeet. It's a euphemism if you want it to be, hobo. I can also just stab the fish. Which is also pretty effective. And then we can wait until healed. And because they're fish, they can't attack me out of the water. Well, that, that part's pretty good. I can also, of course, see um, entities on the minimap. And if they're green or red, etc. Friendly or not friendly. Come here, fishy. Bonk. Bonk. And we're filling up my XP bar slowly. Ooh, look at this! A smorgasbord port. Bonk, 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 bonk. 
Bonk. Ow. Come to me. Wait until I heal. And as you can see, there's now a red dot because that glow pad really wants to kill me. Fortunately, they can't move. The audio just kicks it up to 11. The, um... What's the word? The uh, music in the new trailer gives me anxiety. <laughs> like, just hearing it gives me anxiety. It stresses me the hell out. Well, let's keep heading north. Well, look at that. We've traveled to Red Rock. So I get enough XP to level up. So now we've officially made it to Red Rock. And we've leveled up. Um, I think I'm going to save four mutation points so I can buy a new mutation. But there ain't much really that I can do outside of that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to wait until I have 100 skill points so I can put some points into wayfaring. I could grab axe or whatever, but I feel like there, isn't, there isn't really much that I can grab in any of these skill trees. This is your, your, your skill trees, basically. They look a little old-fashioned. I think they're still redoing that UI, but I quite like that UI, so I'll be sad when it goes. Did I catch the race? I did. Yeah, I, I started an hour late, Hobo. Weird, like, solid race. Like, not bad. Am I playing an Esper here? You can... I can never remember the hotkey for this screen. You can stare at that for, like, 90 seconds or screenshot it if you want. But, uh, yeah, no, it was a solid race. Solid race. I, I, was, I was quite happy with it. Like, I, I was expecting a... Uh, a procession that was very slow and instead we got cars on ice which was you, you, you know honestly not bad what do you think Hobo there was plenty of fun throughout <laughs> and you did not fall asleep at all <laughs> it was super late and you were super baked yeah I mean it, it was super late I, I mean I, st I started watching it on the train on the way home from a metal show and then finished it when I got home and yeah it was fine Like, I'm not as experienced with this game as you, Big Simple, but I do... Uh, I've seen credits uh, twice, and I've gotten, like, level 40 espers a couple times, so... I know what I'm doing. I'm just... rusty, generally. Die, monkey! So we're getting attacked by baboons. They throw rocks, they mean. Um, and their description is pretty great, which is... Wet nostrils flare in seat of his dropped snout. Flare at the seat of his dropped snout, and furry arms wave in unprecedented motions. His eyes are full of sto stony mischief. He's equipped with a small stone. Fortunately, they don't have much ammunition. Wow, I don't know if I put it that high, but it was certainly entertaining. Just gonna wait. Come here, you. And I level up again. I can wait again. And then there's our stairs into the dungeon. So I do actually have enough points now to buy Wayfaring. Wayfaring makes you get lost less on the overworld. And uh, <laughs> getting lost basically is you... If you're traveling on the overworld, you drop down to the tile beneath you and you have to just walk until your character decides they know where they are again, um, which is fun. Probably better than you at this. I don't know, I've made less videos. How many hours do you have out of curiosity? Although as, as somebody who's made a lot of tutorials for a thing, I know that make, the process of making tutorials is actually just um, read the wiki, confirm, Test, make tutorial, repeat. <laughs> um, so, making tutorials doesn't necessarily mean that you're like a god knowledge base. It just means that you can read a wiki. You doubt those numbers? All right. I mean, I've got about half that. Yeah, I've got just under three hundred. But I don't doubt those hours. Those are those are legitimate. Um, this way. Slowly clearing. Is it usable? You have tinkering? 
Uh, so scrap isn't... Wait, when you say scrap, do you mean scrap piles on the ground, or do you mean items once they're scrapped? Because you search scrap piles, or trash piles, and you gain scrap. Scrap is, scrap is like cracked lens, the broken circuit boards, all that stuff. And then you, if you have tinkering and you have the disassemble skill, you disassemble those items, or any items for that matter, into scrap. Scrap, I can't, I don't actually think I have access to that screen just yet, do I? Yeah, because I don't have tinkering. But it'll, on the right side of this screen, the right side of this screen will populate, and it'll have a bunch of letters of, uh, or color-coded scrap types and the amount of scrap that you have. So you disassemble the scrap and it goes into your crafting screen and doesn't take up inventory space anymore. Or you disassemble items. So basically you get stuff and turn it into bits, which are then crafted into items. But when they've been turned into bits, they can't be sold and they have no weight on your character anymore. Another monkey. Let's just shoot lasers at you. Four already. Doing all right. I've got an attribute point. I'm actually going to put that into intelligence because I'm kind of an idiot right now. Which will allow me to get more of this. I think we're, we're probably just going to need 21 intelligence just so I can get all the wayfaring and also some tinkering. Um, but uh, let's grab marshes and hills and mountains. I think that there is a toggle. I don't know the, 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 the buttons to hit. There is a toggle where you can treat item as scrap. And then whenever you pick it up, it'll automatically dis disassemble it. Monkeys are annoying. They're not that bad. They used to be way stronger. But as long as you, you've got a couple levels in, they're not too bad. We're just auto-exploring. There's a goat down there. I'll sunder your mind. Have fun. And he walked away too quick. <laughs> Got him out. I wasn't able to keep him in my line of sight, so he just went and died. Can you die, please? Thank you. Do everybody a favor and eat shit and die. We're going to quickly whip up a meal. We've gathered a disdained shoemaker's left arm. A dram of adapted chrome and a hunk of cheese. Y you know, honestly, that would actually be edible if there was no chrome in that. So liquid chrome, somebody's arm, and uh, a hunk of cheese. It's just what we found in the surroundings around us, I suppose. And I'm going to sleep until morning. As the sun comes up. Going to sunder our mind. I'm going to... Mm. Laze you. Laze you. Just laze you a second time. So for certain enemy types, I will be very careful about using laze because I want the loot that's in their inventories. For other enemy types, I don't care at all. These guys have nothing on them, so I, I don't care too much. And I don't care about accidentally destroying uh, the meat on their bodies because I'm not, like, butchering them right now. Arm cheese delicious? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. Hey, look, a dog. I'm going to pet it. I pet the dog. The dog barks. Very good video game. Um, she is a snarling mess of matted hair. You know, I think that this feral dog needs a visit to the girl with the dogs. And then would go from being a snarling mess of matted hair to being a snarling mess of adorable. I'm just saying, girl, girl with the dogs, best YouTube channel on on YouTube, um, and the dogs are killing bats. Well, good luck, dogs. Uh, this is a gelatinous ball of.
bleh. This is a giant amoeba. Slime within the quivering blob strikes into different dim densities, and you can barely perceive the outline of something inside. Bonk. 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 And dead. Disgusting. Also, the way down is literally right there, so that's very convenient. As for the walls in here, uh, clay and quartz were dried and smashed into the red rock that's been quarried by hill folk for thousands of years. Right here we have a giant centipede clittering, chittering legs in the high dozens figure S swerve, its shining trunk like the spine of a gigantic hominid. Come to me, you ugly bugling. I'm going to sunder this one's mind. Let me hit this one. Surprised it even has a mind to sunder. And then zap you to death. I'm going to... Clairvoyance down here. Because I do have clairvoyance. Might as well use it. Oh, well, there was a knoll there. He's dead now. We level up to level five. Mm, clear that. Trying to find something to successfully sunder the mind of, but that's an angry plant that wants me dead. The angry plant is a seed-spitting vine. It's a jade. Green tendrils curl up inward and hug their center tension. Their leaves vibrate to low-volume crunches as they compact seed matter for spitting. Uh, the rocket skates run, I kind of intentionally killed it to start this one. So this is Eurus the Tourist. This is a roleplay run, so we can save. Because my goal is to uh, see all of the new content. But it'll take us a bit to get there. These are angry spikes that want to kill me. So I'm going to kill them. And something's on fire. That's why there's smoke going by. I would like to remind everybody that one of my favorite randomly generated quests I ever got in this game was... Uh, go collect uh, whatever the item was from... The Flaming Tar Pits, which are next to the Flame tar, tar Pits, located just north of the Flaming Tar Pits. Apparently I had salty sap on me. I'm dripping sap still. Uh, we are going to Clairvoyance just in front of us. There's an angry plant there. Let's go stab the angry plant. Oh yeah, there's randomly gen. The the um, the neutral villages uh, have random quests built into them. Ah, there's a knoll I can see. So this knoll is a snapjaw scavenger who's waiting, and their description is tusks of fur, dressed skin stretched over taut muscle. Upright he stands, but he looks ready to drop onto fours. His snout snarls and his ears twitch, and he barks in his hyena tribesman answer. There's a whole zone you could very easily turn into flaming tar pits. You don't really want to kill the gnolls um, with your mind with lasers uh, because they do drop bronze weapons, and in early game that's like a decent source of income. <laughs> like it's they're not the worst items for selling. Ah, let's uh, sunder this boy's mind, shall we? So we're going to sunder his mind <laughs> and just in insta-gibs him from uh, uh, through walls. Now, for once, I get to be the evil baddie who insta-gibs a character through walls instead of getting insta gib through walls. Sometimes it's nice to have sweet vengeance. And uh, the snap draw dropped a cop copper nugget, which is good. I'm gonna grab this uh, bronze battle axe, the vine wafer, and the arrows, why not? And then we'll auto explore. I will. I would sunder, mind you, but it's off. It's on cooldown. 
So they ha they have a quilted shawl, which I can look at, which has plus 10 cold resistance. I could equip it, or I could just pick it up. We'll pick it up. We'll also take the two-handed sword. What kind of weapon am I using? I'm using an iron long sword right now. Okay, so don't need the bronze, but other bronze stuff is just money. Ooh, this one dropped a weird artifact, which we can use for the next quest. You killed an enemy on a stairway, and it dropped loot, and I can't find or it or pick it up. It just says I passed by. Is that a bug? You may have already picked it up. Some of the items are auto pickup. Uh, this is a flaming iron longsword, which has a cell in it. So I'm going to remove the cell and take the sword. It's actually a pretty decent early game pickup. Fortune to uh, more water holding devices. So this other small trinket, I'm going to examine it, which is a used chem cell. Well, so it said that you're passing by its corpse or you're passing by items. Uh, stand on top of them and press G. See if you can pick them up. So I'm probably not going to use that flaming iron sword. Not because it's bad. I mean, it's 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 a good... Uh, actually, I guess I can install it and just use it to complete that quest later. Not because it's bad, but just because it, it will... Overpower itself pretty quick. Oh, also, I don't want to be using that in Akimbo. So I remove that. Replace you with the flaming sword. Probably just use that to complete Argvi's quest later. Whoops. Although I don't know if used chem cells will count for that. We're going to sunder your mind. And laze you. And laze you again. And heal. And laze you. I have to be careful with using too many lasers. If I use too many lasers, then I lose my sense of light. So I, I basically lose my uh, ability to see in the dark as I use lasers because it uses my light charge. Oh, that's a spotter. Spotter can die. I found a willowy short bow and a, two copper nuggets. Excellent. Lots of loot. Oh, hello, you. Buddy, do you mind if I uh, share your hookah? So he's got he's got a hookah here, uh, which is a, a, a crystal water pipe with several smoking stems. The hookah needs water in it. <laughs> well, hmm. I will gladly put some water in your hookah. Can I not just put one water in your hookah? Put all the water in your hookah. And then I can smoke it. I think I just broke the UI. <laughs> Anyway, he friendly. So since we've had since we've had a few puffs, we can we can take a look at our friendly character, who is a glitter mech luminary pariah to her people. She's neutral, and sitting. I can't kill her. Uh, heat, pressure, and beauty, and transformation are concepts understood by every manner of a human being. When the sundry tribes commune by campfire, and and the hill folk over the godliness of the mountain face, so does the troglodyte speak with the wonderment of the splayed crystal things that glint in the shadows of her cave. Though neither has the language to articulate the mechanisms that connect them together, they know these things are the same. I'm not going to attack it, but I will say hello. It's a damn shame that I can't like you know, maybe could kill it later, but. I have fought those in the ruins. Actually, hold up. Campfire first. I hear about Snoop, what, quitting smoke? The corporate posts kind of mocking it are pretty funny. 
but yes, I did. Rummaging in these surroundings, you find these ingredients. A dash of rhythmic Equimax hair, a sprinkle of modest Equimax hair, and a sprinkle of exalted ash, and a smidgen of cyan sesame. So, hair and blue sesame? Huh. Yeah, no, that, that creature would turn me into a pulpy mess. You wish him luck? I mean, dude smokes blunts. Like, he's one of those people who I kind of just randomly expect to get diagnosed with, like, lung cancer or something. Yeah, we'll let Spody, Spoder live. Spoders can be friends. Spiders are only hostile to you if you're A, one, injured actively, or B, caught in their webs. Like, GMO sesame. <laughs> I'm, I'm into the GMO sesame. We're going to sunder the mind of this one back here, but first we're going to look at them because purple units are important. This is... <clears throat> I'm going to do my best to pronounce this name as accurately as I possibly can. Bilburulogwaf, the fearsome snapjaw snap fire snarler. Um, so they're loved by snapjaws and disliked by newly sentient beings who are reprogramming their favorite robot. It's cute that they think that they are smart enough to reprogram things. So I'm going to sunder your goddamn mind. Get brain smashed. And now I'm on fire because, you know, they're a fire snarler. And I just immediately eviscerated the dude in front of me. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, I played a game a couple months ago, Stormwolf called The First Men, which is a game made by a Turkish developer and is full of Turkish fol folklore and Turkish language stuff. And there was somebody who commented on the video that I put up about how they think it's absolutely hysterical that I can, like, s pronounce words from Dwarf Fortress and Caves of Cud in a way that sounds believable but cannot pronounce a word of Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's really funny. Like you can read text in Caves of Cud and or Fortress, like in a manner that's believable. <laughs> but you try and read Turkish and you sound like an idiot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's that's fair. So these guys are swarming enemies, so they do get like buffs based on um, the number of units in the area. So I should actually probably run away from this. Try and get into a bottleneck, so I'm not fighting all of them at once. The trick is to always sound like an idiot. True. Yeah. Then no one's surprised. I'm gonna go into a defensive stance. So, more on the keyboard. Let's turn that on. Focus on blocking. These guys are already giving me like nothing for XP. Now, nope, shot the wall. So character is injured. Enemy stats are down here. So they go from being fine to injured to being badly injured and then dead, basically. Yeah, Snapjaws tend to breed like crazy. I need to eat some witch wood. So if we die, I will basically lose everything that I've done in the last hour. I'm just trying to move. Okay, that's where the snap draw is, is just south of me. So we're hitting the snap draw that I was hitting earlier. But I'm confused because Witchwood Bark tends to confuse you when you're using it. Okay, well, he is wounded now. Should probably just go aggressive. Could also eat another Witchwood. He'll probably just hit you. Missing me, which is good. He misses me again. Well, whenever that pops up, regardless of why it pops up, I assume I'm dead. 
It's which wood? Uh, more like why wood. Uh, so newly sentient beings like me a little bit more now. Um, but Snapjaws already hated me, so no, no real value was lost. I'm going to move a little bit north. I'm going to try and wait until healed. Wait for them to come up to me and then kill them when they get close enough to me. The normal Snapjaws are a non-concern. It's just the legendary ones can be a bit strong sometimes. Now this guy might be a little bit tough. He is equipped with a weird artifact. Tussocks of fur dress skin stretched over top muscle. Same as before. But he's got a weird wet weird art a wet weird artifact. Hmm. I'm going to begin sundering his mind. Could shield slam him. I'm gonna eat another witch wood, I think. I'm being like oddly careful. I'm not usually this careful. That one time it didn't confuse me, which is great, and we got a crit and we killed him. What did he drop? Take that. Wow, we <laughs> killed so many of them right here. Bloody salt encrusted weird artifact. I'm going to examine it. Ah! It's a stun rod. It's a good thing he didn't stun me. Um, can keep that. What's up, Suey? How's things? Caves of Mike. Caves of Cud. If if the caves cud, I, if the caves could think. There we go. That's a terrible joke. We found a hammock, and I killed a plant. Brine straw was braided into a rope lettuce saddle for slinging between two old oaks and napping. The fibers on the middle sag are extra frayed from the counter center from the center mass strain of a reclining ass. Yeah, I was originally gonna stream on Saturday, but then I was busy, so. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't think I've ever actually used a stun rod. <laughs> um, with the exception of builds where I have a many, many arms and I stick it in an extra arm. It's... It's not... I mean, it probably would be okay on this character, but it's a powered item, so you need batteries for it. And without batteries, it's just a really, really bad blunt weapon. So I do, did have to use two of my Witchwoods, so I might actually go back to town and turn in the knickknacks, the, the artifacts that we have, because I could get back here really quickly. And it's always good to be cautious in this game. And I could sell some stuff and buy more healing items and all that jazz. So I think I'm going to... How many caves could cute cute if cute could cute cave? Oh boy, that's a sentence. Thanks, Hobo, for the dollar. I'm going to shield slam you. Knocked him prone, but he stands up. And we're going to go aggressive stance and just start hitting. And the bug dies. Pick up the wet beaded bracelet, the fractured microchip, and then we're going to walk this way. Yeah, I think we're going to go back to town. We're going to walk to the nearest stairway up. Although, actually, I'm going to take the long way, the way that we came. So we're gonna run back to town real quick. We're gonna travel via the overworld. I'm going to give my artifacts to Argvi, get some free XP, buy some more healing items, and then come back. Bye, guy. See you later. I'm gonna sunder your mind even though I'm not actually gonna be able to complete it. <laughs> and he just dies immediately. Ooh, you had a painted dagger. Good thing we killed this guy, actually. So if you look at painted daggers, and by doing that, you press enter on them and hit L. Or use the look command. Look, uh, if, if it's painted or engraved, it'll have some history on it. So this has a scene from the life of the ancient salted, Pol Polyrarad. Polyrarad. 
So, uh, Polly Pocket here. Uh, after striking a deal with cats, Polly Rarad convinced them to help him found a workshop in Hambimrod for the purpose of soldering, of soldering wires to, to power batteries, and they named it the Workshop of the Coiled. Well, that's pretty rad. A workshop populated with cats? Anyways, we learned the location of it, so I will take that. Lacquered is just more valuable version of the thing, so we'll also take that, and might as well take the short bow as well. Move up the stairs. Uh, there is a mutation that makes the player into a battery that can charge batteries and produce electricity. Now we're on the overworld, and we're just going to travel on the overworld back to Yappa. I'm going to press backspace and enter to go speak with Argvi, and I'm going to give him his knickknacks. And also, by that, I mean I'm going to remove this flaming sword that I'm wielding right now. I'm going to remove the cell from it. And I'm going to unequip the flaming sword with a non-flaming sword. For items, I'm going to give him the power cell and the stun rod. Well... Yeah, we're, we're just going to do that. So we get 75 XP for that. And then he asks me to get him another trinket, which is a new quest. And I'm going to give him the power cell. I'm going to sell the sword. It says, good, good. Quite impressive, treasure hunter. Maybe you're fit to poke around my workshop here. I've been wanting another apprentice. It's very unfortunate what happened to Scref. What, you know, with the disembowelment and all. Take a seat. There. Now, let me expand, explain. I am on the cusp of a grand discovery. When I'm done assembling the weird wire conduit, it's a radio, you'll be able to speak to anyone from here to the Caiaphas. Caiaphas? Caiaphas. Uh, and first, though, I'm going to need several strands of wire. As many, of you can, as many as you can find, at least 200 feet. You should be able to scavenge enough from the rust wells and nearby caves. It's also more valuable for lacquered. And now we have a new uh, quest, which is Weird Wire Conduit Eureka. All right, now we're gonna go speak with Tam. Tam is a camel person, and I always feel bad asking them what kind of animal they are, but for some reason, regardless of how many of these dudes you talk to, you can always be like, what the fuck are you? Which I think is kind of funny. Um, hi, Yur I'm Yuris, who are you? Let's trade. Um, all right, so, doop, 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 doop. Doop, doop, doop. Um, I'll keep the willowy short bone, maybe equip it. All right, so I got 63 drams worth of sturf. Really want to know what that lacquered artifact is. I might just trade this for like that and then drams maybe. Yeah, I think we'll just do that. Trade complete. We'll see you when we see you, animal. You, you snooze good. Just make sure you apologize to that hay after you hit it, yeah? If, you, if uh, you could mutate to produce electricity and not need batteries anymore. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, in order, and in order to eat a whole bear, you literally have to be starving. So you have to starve your character to the point where you're desperate enough that you'll eat a corpse, and then you need to kill a bear, or you need to kill the bear first, and then eat the whole bear. Um, I'm going to eat fresh apple mats, which is the local delicacy. And uh, you start to metabolize the meal, and after gaining the and you gain the following effect for the rest of the day. 15% to the natural healing rate, and you do thirst at half rate. Drop by again. Well, cheers, dude. Um, let's, I'm just running back to Red Rock. Moving down. We need better armor. That's something I need. And then we can do this pretty quickly by just doing this. Go down to nearest downstairs, and then they just walk to the staircase. It's kind of sad. I, I really like the, the new Red Rock that they did in the last major update. But I will say, the old Red Rock used to just be identical. 
to the way the original uh, Rogue generated its levels, and I kind of miss it. Because it was, like, weirdly nostalgic. Let's uh, throw on aggressive stance. Throw these up. Snap jaws are, like, kind of a non-concern pretty quick. Although that one just hit me pretty hard. That was a very weird animation. Hmm. I'm going to sprint. And... You know what? I'm just going to run away from this guy for right now. Because I just want to go away and heal. Pop back down to here, because I'm quite squishy right now because my armor sucks. He's probably over here still somewhere. There he is. Uh, so I'm going to Sunder your brain. So he starts taking damage. And then if I don't move or attack anything, he keeps taking damage. And it increases. But I'm now getting a nosebleed because I'm too powerful. And then he dies. So... Holy crap, that's why he did so much damage. Because he had a two-handed carbide hammer. <laughs> that explains that. Uh -huh. What am I currently equipped with? I should probably just throw on that carbide hammer, hey? Yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a damage upgrade. Uh, and I currently have leather armor equipped, okay. That's a very out-of-level thing to pick up. Pocketed vest and a Snapchat corpse cam. I mean, it doesn't take, take a mathematical genius to look at the stat differences between this, 5, 6, 1, D4, right? And then this, 6, 9, 2, D4 plus 1. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a lot of damage. The problem is I can't use a lot of my abilities right now because they're not. You know. Eh. Did I not? Hmm. You know, I would need to look it up on the wiki because I'm terrible at explaining uh dice based rule sets we've learned this over the years I'm going to take this oil Bonk. is the electro bow good it needs batteries but it gives you basically like electric da electrical damage Take that water skin. Game should have automatically picked that up. Uh, it's based on like the rule says system in this game is based on Gamma Gamma World, which is a D and D derivative. So yes. Ooh, I can wear a hat. I now have a hat. And I found a honey injector. Which, plus when you use it, uh, it gives you plus six strength, plus two temporary hit bonus per level, and uh, minus 25 move speed, and you can't feel pain, and you're immune to fear. Yeah, literally walking around with giant hammer and whacking, whacking bugs. I'm just going to sunder this. Come here, Noel. It's very noble of you. I do not... Okay, actually, I'm going to stop using this hammer because I can't hit anything. 
I need some points in like two-handed item wielding uh, because I just straight up am doing no damage to anything because I can't hit them. So it's actually going to cause me to die if I don't turn it off. Um, let's remove that and put the longsword back in. And we are in an ad, so I will not move until it is done. Three minutes. Hulk honey sounds so dirty, you love it. Uh, this... Suey, so in this game, you can inject love straight into your veins. I'm going to go use the toilet. I will be back in a second. No, my uh, low agility certainly isn't. I, I mean, like, I need armor is what I need right now, based on this build. I need armor and more toughness, but, I mean... Even is the hotkey for character sheets. I can never remember. Like, we're not Over here, he has a sword. the worst, but it's like intelligence needs to go up, agility needs to go up, toughness needs to go up. You know, they all need to go up. I'll be right back. Yeah, and also if you use too many different types of injectors at once, uh, not only can you OD on them, but also uh, it can cause negative effects instead of positive effects. But I guess that that's considered also OD. But yeah, no, this is a weird build right now, currently. Although we have a hat, which is good. but we're just going to sunder some people's minds from back here. So let's go over to this. Boom. Let's sunder the bug mind. Hey, I leveled up. Cool. I love how they die in a wall of music notes. When I die, that's how I want to die. Um... No new attribute points. I can buy a new mutation, though, which I'm going to do. Hmm. You know, all three of these would be good. Space-time vortex is hysterical. Um, mass mind is would be very useful. in specific situations. Time dilation would be very useful for all of my melee stuff. But your brain wants to push keys? That's, that would be my problem. I would, I would want a keyboard. It's like, I'm sure you can play a game like this without a keyboard, but I would still want uh, a, a, like a keyboard. I'm very tempted to just take time dilation, even though I think mass mind might be more useful. I mean, it's it's like a, it's an ability refresh, right? But right now, be, because like I'm, I'm a melee bruiser esper is my build, which is like, kind of counterintuitive. I feel like time dilation might be more useful for the melee side of things. 
It's just not as flashy, I guess, as Space Time Vortex. Space fine, fine, uh, Time Vortex just lets you summon a black hole that may or may not kill you. You like Space Time Vortex because you can easily escape when in trouble? You can easily escape to somewhere that's ten times more dangerous. I'm going to go with Time Dilation. And I'm going to I think leave that other point just sitting there. Um everything needs agility. Could start throwing points into tinkering. Could start throwing points into Right, yeah, this is the new first aid. Treat boiling, pleasing, and disease on set for you and your companions at a campfire. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Um so this is this is one of the new trees. Um or one of the new tech trees, I guess, from this version. And I am very curious about these abilities. Uh, depends on the schematic, and depends on the schematic. Like, that, yeah, that, that, I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Found a compass bracelet. Hmm. I'm equip that. I'm gonna take the shawl again. I'm going to laser this bug. We also picked up a stun rod while I was exploring. angry plant there that wants me dead. This plant is thinking about what it would do to me if it could touch me. And I'm, to it, I'm going to say, eat lasers. No. Eat lasers, mother trucker. And then I'm going to... Oh, there's hostiles nearby, apparently. I'm going to kill this bud. Die, laddie! Picked up a leather... Oh. Picked up a leather whip. which could allow us to be Urius, Deanda, and Jones, but eh. Stand here and heal. Walk over to the angry plant and stab it with a knife. Just gonna wait for these gnolls to walk up to me and then one by one, remove their ability to breathe. And I will absolutely, absolutely take that opal pummeled steel battle ax. Dang. Opal pummeled steel Battle axe. That's fa that's got to be. It's probably gonna pull a nice, nice sail. That one. An empty vessel and a bed on the ground. And you, that one had a desert Chris. Don't know who Chris is, but they're in the desert apparently. I can move down this way. I can finish exploring. Walk to the nearest stairway dune. There's a deep pool of water that way. Are you sure you want to go downwards and start swimming? I don't really have an option. So now we're swimming. So I basically that means I can't run. Well, actually, I'm whoop, finished this step. Find the creatures that are eating the water vine. I was gonna pop up one layer and then heal, or not heal, eat, but... So this is a wet, defanged gershling. Star orchid saliva pools in the cavities where its fangs used to be, and drips into onto pallid leg things. It shudders in the capture of some pristine ecstasy lost to space and time. And it lets out a loud, proud, and piercing whine. I don't know why I said loud. Is the legendary one still about? No, I killed it. All right, so 
I need its body, so I can't laser it to death. But I can sunder its mind until it gets to me. Well, never mind. I immediately killed it. And uh, I can pick up its body now, which gives me 100 XP, because that's what I need for the quest. So I can... Uh, Let's clairvoyance up here a little bit. See what's going on. Ah. Please die. Dumb plant. I can heal. I can explore around here because we get more dialogue if I find a certain thing. I'm famished. Well, that's why I was going to make a meal. Well, clearly, a, a famished Eurus the tourist eats shavings from a shores, shortest tail, a pot, a dash of sottle, swaddled salt, and a dram of liberated dog hair. You must liberate the dog hair, Chad. Uh, and some rust, and we put it into a pot and stir. We eat the meal. Delicious. Squamps it. And now I got impaled on a spike. Which means I can test out the new healing skill that I just totally unlocked, right? Staunch wounds. Did, 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 did I not just unlock that? Or would... Oh, I see. I'm not actually bleeding. I just got impaled. Usually that causes bleeding, but I guess not. Liberated dog hair is what you're having for dinner? I mean, whatever fills the belly, I suppose. Those plants um, rust your items. You kind of have to be careful with them. And now I'm bleeding. Can I staunch wounds now? Did I not? Bandages you apply. Oh, it's for bandages specifically. So I need bandages to staunch wounds. Well, that's interesting. Guess I should get some bandages then. Looking for the uh, glow right or all glot or whatever they're called now, which are like the priests that worship the gush. Because there's usually one. Hmm. There usually is one down here. And it's friendly now. Ye. Can I handle freedom? It is you. That's an angry murder plant. Well, we're just auto-exploring the zone until we find him, I suppose. Being kind of careful with these. Just wait twice. Um, there's a couple of skills that would allow that allow you to. Befriend the tame dogs. I'll tell you this. The dogs are extremely weak. So they're kind of crappy friends. Hold a spider and plant. Yeah, there's, there's several skills that can allow you to do that. Ow. Or crit me. Oh, dick. I thought I saw... Oh. Did, did, did I just see one run by? Oh, there he is. Would like to examine this lad. So this is a tough but neutral rate of al... Uh, 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 hmm. Aglol God. A figure marked by a star orchid and robes as a votary of the gear and reveler of the metamorpho... Uh, the metamorphic Newman and nails filth black and flesh out from her sleeve 
in a gesture poem that say plague is but transmutation. Death is the ladder to life, and existence of children proves the pre pre prelacy of raw growth, a rank and acrid smell clings to her. Who doesn't love puppers? Uh, I mean, it'll make you very sadders when, like, they get murdered by the first thing you run into that isn't friendly. Think she needs a bath? I think she needs a lot more than a bath. Kind of tempted to kill her, actually, but it's probably not the best idea for various reasons. Ow! Am I getting crit by a plant? All right, let's move up. Let's move up. A bloodbath? Sure. And now we can run back to town that we have Oh, great. <laughs> I managed to get lost. At least it's not going to be too far to go. Thanks, low intelligence score. We are no longer lost because I'm pretty sure this is just... Yup, is it not? Yep, it is. All right, sweet. So, I can now speak to... Uh... Buddy, where, where are you going? Dude. 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 That's convenient. Mahmet's sitting on a floor cushion. And they say, live and drink, friend. Have you tidings from Red Rock? Yes, I found bits of a gnawed water vine and slew a water white spiderling. It bothers me that they say white, because it's purple. It's purple. Anyway, I, I slaughtered and slew a white spiderling. I carry its corpse with me. What a hideous thing. I dread the horrors of its, pre its presence portends. Bring the corpse to the elder Iridad's hut for the elder to examine. Elder is right here, though. Live and drink, Wayfarer. Welcome to the Oasis Hamlet of Yapa. Here you will find shade and vettel, along with other provisions to help you better scour the rust caves for treasure. Above all else, you may drink of our fresh water to qu and, quench your thir and quench your thirst. And I say, I return from Red Rock with a corpse of a pale spiderling elder. Would you examine it? It's moon and sun, can it be? My grandfather and his grandfather, he... This... This is a gershling. An infernal creature of plague. But not for a millennium has... But... Why now? You see, Wayfarer, a thousand years ago, in the last days of the Sultanate, a series of seven plagues called the Gear spread... Chat, is it the ear? The gear? The gyre? How do you pronounce? Um, spread through and out of Cud. They were a long, stewing punishment for some trespass committed in the soft sludge of the Primordium before even the Sultans reigned. You say Geyer? Hmm. Geyer? Geyer? I don't even... Dyer. Anyway. Um... A scourge of Gershlings was one of those plagues, but Recef lifted the curse, and he cast off his crown and unmade the Sultanate. It makes no sense that the Gershlings would return to eat our crops, unless... What dark tidings is this? Then I can ask, I found a strange figure shadowing the creature, and I can also state, I know I noticed that the creature had its fangs removed. These are new bits of dialogue. So let's read this one. Oh, in dyed robes flashing gestures of hand and ranting about pipe milk. A gear white must be. Those mon monads worship the Gersh Nephalim as half-gods. I say Gersh Nephalim. The seventh plague, demons born of the moon's stare, quickened to life for the purpose of eating our young. Recef cast them back before, but if they've returned, Eurist, your discovery is invaluable to us. But we are but poor farmers, and sharpen our vine reapers is all that we can do. But there may be others outside of Yapatha who can do more. Take these prickly boons as thanks 
and I will so not soon forget your service to us. Eurist, please leave me now to muse on this. And they gave me an Uber Nostrum, a Salve Injector, a Salve Injector, and a Salve Injector, and a weird artifact. And we've completed the quest. And Yappa likes me more. I'm curious if I can... Ah, would you kindly explain the gir the Gersh gear was a series of seven plagues, and a thousand years ago, the plague scourge, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then it's just, what can you tell me about Yappa? Yappa is an oasis hamlet nestled between the eastern reaches of the green salt pans and the jungles of Cud. We are a community of watervine farmers, and these groves lie among some of the few tracts of land with en tame enough to grow watervine. What can you tell me about Cud? Cud is a strange and terrifying mesa to the northeast, and her tainted rivers breed life in all its motley forms. Her poisoned jungles shelter priceless relics of a forgotten past, but that is just half of it. For Cud's most precious treasures and her most hideous children lie within the innumerable chrome caverns beneath the scarlet loam. To ply those silver hollows is a spry adventurer's dream. But years have wisened me beyond such foolish ambitions. But you may not be deterred. So. Are you talking about uh, Argvi's, like, previous assistance? Assistance? Scrap? Because I do have that achievement, yes. And I got to pet the cat again. All right, so did I... Okay, I do have weird wire conduit. Um, Character's hungry. Go eat. We have fix-it spray foam. Hundred and thirty-five points to spend. Whoopsies. Yeah, basically for all of these I, I need intelligence. I feel like acrobatics might actually be really useful for me, but I don't have 17 agility. <laughs> so I think I might actually just save my my skill points. I have 135 of them. I think I'm just going to save those until I level up agility, maybe. Or at least for the next little bit. Phosphorescent. This is one of those games where I do kind of feel like I need a thesaurus to play chunks of it, though. Or actually, I could just grab the canyon lore. That or I could save for, like, swipe. Um, because sex sells. Fuck up. You know, it's, um, sort of on that topic, but... I'll be careful with how I word this. The first time I went to TwitchCon was in 2016. And I'm going to paint a stereotype here and know that stereotypes are stereotypes and do not count for literally everybody. The first time I went to TwitchCon, the vast majority of the people at TwitchCon were dudes with beards. Now when you go to TwitchCon... There's still a lot of dudes with beards, but there is an equal if not greater number of extraordinarily scantily clad women. <laughs> it's interesting how times change. I will just say that. Um, not that I mind. It's just interesting how times change. Can I examine this? Poison grass grenade, okay. All right, so we their natural biome E3. No, I, I think it's just, I, I mean, I've said this many, 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 many times. 
Um, is Twitch the new OnlyFans? You're not actually allowed to promote an OnlyFans on Twitch, fun fact. So no, it's not the new OnlyFans. There are audiences for every type of content out there, right? I create content for people who want to play and talk about complicated video games. Some people out there create content for people who want parasocial companionship. And that is a very large market. Whether that be uh, people who do primarily uh, like talking content or looking pretty and talking to people. That is a market that needs to be served so that market can exist. Um, there is only one portion of Twitch that I'm actively bothered by, and that is the gambling section. But aside from that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Twitch promoting and the market existing of things like ASMR and parasocial companionship streams. Can they cause issues for people? Absolutely. Can people get into unhealthy situations doing that? Absolutely. But you can also get into an unhealthy situation by playing too much of an MMO. So at the end of the day, why am I not on front page and a pretty girl kissing her microphone is? Because a lot of people want to watch a pretty girl kissing her microphone and not a lot of people want to watch me playing Caves of Cut. It's just what it is. If I played different types of games, I would get more front page time. All right, we're going to go to this random location. This is a location that I discovered by reading a statue, I think. So we'll get a little bit of XP just for going there, and I level up. We're gonna see if we can get through here. You happy? Ozoned? Fuck off. <laughs> Don't ever ask for that again. All right. Covering my due. Funk. Funk. Let's, uh, clairvoyance. Oh, boy. So many friggin'. Oink. I'm actually going to swap to defensive stance. Focus on blocking. Hmm. My leather armor was cracked. That's another way of saying your shitty armor is now worse. Turn on time dilation. Swap back over to aggressive stance. And I'm actually just going to leave the map and go, oh god, there's dudes everywhere here. And I'm about to die now. Hmm. I may just die, actually. I'm going to try sprinting. 100% I'm dead. Well. At least I'm not going to go that far back. Oh, I still have the corpse in my inventory. Uh, let, let's see what I can do. Let's see if I can save this. I'm going to... Give myself a salve. And if I don't die this next turn immediately, which I didn't, that's impressive. I can... Shield slam this guy. Swap to defensive stance. And I'm dead. <laughs> so I'm going to reload from checkpoint. I was curious if I could, like, survive this zone, but we'll see if we can. So I guess what we're going to have to do... Hmm. Because I should be able to fight this. I should be able to. Let's just jump to aggressive stance, which we're already in. I'm going to sunder mind of, let's just say, this guy, which kills him. Kill the first one. Kill the second one. Kill the third one. Kill the fourth one. Kill the fifth one. They get a crit. Lays. And lays. Move up a tile. Move up a tile. 
Plays you. Hit you. Uh, they're all really weak, but in a group, they get way stronger. So I could probably just... Oh, shit. Dog's angry at me for some reason. I'm sorry, Pooch! Okay, that's what killed me. That makes sense. Uh, so this is a danger pork, danger pork, danger pig, uh, also known as a slug snout, member of the cult of Xerxid. Uh, scratch hair mats on elongated snout and her nostrils drip snood. The liquefied snoo of uh, scavenged corpses before it can dry and compact into snout snot. Snout shot? Yes. These things will three shot you if you let them. Um... Do I have clairvoyance? Yes, I do. I need to get away from this thing. I'm going to turn on time dilation. I'm going to move down to here, and I'm going to sunder its mind because if it if it sees me, I just die because it'll it'll three shot me. Got it. Okay, so now I can heal. Rest to heal. Oh yeah, that was stressful. Um, let's move over here, place a campfire, cook us a meal. I, I guess we did just hate a pig to death. This is absolutely true. Ooh, I don't know why dogs are mad at me here. This sucks. It's because they're cultists, that why. They're, 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 they're cultists that belong to the dog, to, to the, um cult that we are investigating big meanies at least in at least the feral dogs are weak so i'm bleeding i just shield slammed a dog to death so we have marble walls which is interesting Wait, hold on, what? Why are you brown? I don't believe I've ever seen a brown dog. No shield slam you? Hmm. Why does dog hit so hard? Wild. I really need better armor. <laughs> it's a guard dog, not normal? Huh. I don't believe I've ever seen a guard dog. So noted, shoot them with lasers. That bug now mad at me? No, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, always be careful of the angry pig. Uh-oh. Be very wary of weird sounds like that. Something chirps to the southeast. This is a musket turret, uh, which would kill me very quickly if it shoot me. So I'm going to stand here and not get shot by it. Um, I'm also going to clairvoyance again. We're going to clairvoyance like right here. Huh. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it would still kill me pretty quick. Can I sunder the mind of a turret? Nope. <laughs> Thought so. One bug is holding the flow of dogs. It does seem that way. Yeah, because th th this, like, this dude here is blocking them all. Taking damage from my nosebleed. Maybe we should just leave this zone for right now. Need a little bit more survivability. 
So I'm going to pop back to Yappa for the save. And then, whoop, I got lost. Oh, sweet. Well, at least I regained my bearings pretty quickly. I'm going to uh, sprint, and we're going to sprint north. There is a salt hopper. A bulge eye head, stretched thorax of sun salt white, poised to leap through the air by the thrust of the cestet of bounding legs. So, those are what I would describe as an early game run ender. Um, They're quite mean if you let them touch you. So, let's try to not let it touch us too much. Also, you see that pulsing AoE? That is terrifying. What the hell's going on over there? Nothing I can see. Let's rest until healed. See if we can spot this creature. I'm going to actually wait that AoE still going off. Well, that horse just killed something. I would like to see what was making that pulsing. There's a snap jaw set of cor snap jaw corpses over there. Please tell me horse is friendly. Horse is friendly. Okay. Horses do not like dogs, and they also have. Psychic powers, so be careful around horses. Just like real life, they have psychic powers. But in this instance, they're kind of on my side, so. Hmm. I'm going to shield slam you, knock him prone, and swap over to aggressive stance. I'm actually going to run away. Hi. Ponies, please help me. Please kill these things. They're, they're scary and they're chasing me. There's a lot of them. Okay, well, well, we will just go down here. And we will leave. I noticed some ruins nearby. Would you like to investigate? I suppose. We discover the Black Inspiratel of Kimmerer one. There's a gun pointed at me. It is a musket turret. I'm going to try and laser it to death, and it dies. Well, that's good. Um, and then that snapjaw there tries to shoot an arrow at me, but instead hits the horse, which very much he's going to regret. I'm going to run away from this irritable tortoise because they're very slow, and I'm going to uh, pick up those lead slugs that the gun just dropped. I just got hit with an arrow that didn't do that much damage to me, so... Game with proper horse simulation? Yeah, I mean, like, the, uh, what was it? Was it Metal Gear that had the, the horse nuts that were simulated that would get smaller in the cold? Or was that... Or was that Red Dead Redemption? <laughs> I can't remember. That was Red Dead? Okay. I think that's probably a, a more accurate horse simulation. Ooh, I found me a chrome revolver. Which means I now have gun. Not many bullets, only five, but... It's a salamander who's friendly. Of course, it's a ovioid spots and coral and citrine scatter like an island chain across his back and neck. And also worth noting, chat room, if you want me to examine something specific, just holler. Um, like, we cling to one another is the graffiti on that wall. Books! 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 We got butted from his spindle limbs unabridged. And falls of cloud particles seldom last more. And got dyed with glass high. I would like to get dyed with glass high. Uh, and metal wrist mercurial. I'm gonna make a campfire real quick. 
And we um, rummage through our surroundings and we find the ingredients of a defamious wing, a sublime annie seed, and some crowned dog thorn, whatever the fudgicles that be. Literature. Yes. Book. We, which means I can read the book, which the unabridged version, I wonder what the, how long the abridged version is. Um, for reference, these read like, it takes more than enough ammunition to spy of the horses to allow for several weeks. Uh, intereating the kings of our Athen reach and Dora thrashed in the buttery worshiping of quarter, quarter de little, uh, by him was alive and clamorous theme th throp rose. Uh, by own inquiries, I find my purpose on a fluctuating whim covered upon our radiant mother. It is a wonder the poor thing does not seem so. Got it. <laughs> there are three kinds of books in Caves of Cud. There are the gray ones, like the one that we just saw, which are randomly generated garbledy gunk, a word salad, um, and uh, sometimes they contain hints that give you ideas of where to find secret items. However, um, there's also the gold books, which are written lore by the developers, so they contain poetry or um, lore, and sometimes those books change from run to run, but they're always readable. And then there's green books, which just give you a skill. So like a crafting recipe or you learn something. I don't think I have a hat. Oh no, I do. But could it, what's, what's better? I will wear the leather cap because it gives me a little bit more armor. I'm going to zap this tortoise. Tortoises take forever to kill and they move very slowly. The actual issue with tortoises isn't killing tortoises. The, the issue with tortoises is uh, they just, just damaging them is a challenge. And um, the Snapjaw feeder just died. Snapjaw feeders are like a stronger Snapjaw. I think they're new in this patch because I'd never seen them before. But they're a tougher Snapjaw variant that does have a different description. Uh, fur matted in blood brushed clumps along his skin long, flang, long fangs break the plane of his bristly snout and his hind legs tick he reaches with his forearms for the reassurance of dirt in the earth's lightless recesses troglodytes are reclaimed by the primal forces that once shocked them towards civilization did they exist before? I'd never seen them before so um I think I'm going to get us endurance because shake it off. Each round you are dazed or stunned. You have a toughness percent chance to shake off the effect. You also take 25% less damage from poison. Uh, reduces the penalty for new movement speed when swimming. Uh, let's take that because that's actually really useful for us. Normally saw them deep in caves. Maybe I just never noticed them before, but they're certainly much more common now. And then there's this one up here. This one, these guys I've seen before, the trappers. This guy's actually tough. Um, I'm just going to back up and let, let these horses deal with it for me. Unless they just don't feel like it, which would be a pain. I've also got this irritable tortoise following me. Hmm. I want to uh, sunder the mind of the tough one. Is my actual goal. Can I even damage this turtle? Let's see. Eh. I miss. I'm just missing a lot. Well, I guess I'll just laser it. Need to make sure I don't hit anything else.
Tortoise makes weird sounds. Painted cast net with pa you you'd paint it with paint, I would think. Neat, Pablo. Hi, Infinity. All right, so Duder's got a net. We're going to sunder his mind. So he's just going to start taking damage. And he dies. We get three. We actually get kind of a lot of XP for those dudes. Oh, jeez. Going to shield slam you. Crab takes three damage from the slam. Start sprinting backwards. Why did it not follow me? There we go. Crab dead. I wait to heal and go back to auto exploring. While the steeple fires ra raged below, the brave Arconauts sank into the glowing depths to retrieve valuables when their corpses were found and the sand in their pockets had been blown into glass beads. Sometime after, those beads were strung into a bracelet and it's carved with beautiful scrolls. Gives plus one intelligence and a lot of cold resistance. Well, I'm going to equip that. Actually, where does it go? I'm not sure if it takes up a whole slot or not, but... Passed by to jeweled, ru rusted bronze dagger. Jewel-encrusted bronze dagger. Huh. Maybe we should pick that up. It's not going to be that worth, worth high, high value, though. There's a spoder down here, which I can just walk past. There's Spoder up there. Oh, sorry, Spoder. Guess I'll kill you. An engraved poison tipped spear. It's engraved with a scene from the life of the ancient Sultan Deseth, and in 53. 18, after having made enemies with collect with the collective of, of window makers, the Sultan of Cud abducted the throne because of Dusset's reputation for contemplating the meaning of things. He was chosen as the successor. Also, I need to check something. I may have screwed this up. Okay, so it's that or the buckler. Meaning... And also drop this corpse. I don't need this anymore. Um... Well, leave your shitty memes at home and we'll get along just fine. If you come in here and be an edgelord, we're not going to get along super well. Gab. People who come from that individual tend to be rather edge lordy. You get two books through stone and chromes. Sheared through stone and chrome. Legitimacy of the moon, followed by 91. Shown and this shell. Some prejudice? No, it's logic. You're in my house, I ask you to follow my rules. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good setup you got there, Pablo. All right, we can continue on to finish these base level quests. Actually, how much do I have in my inventory? 
And I'm gonna go dump some items. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that place I was just at. And I'm a... I need a chest. Now I have the chest. I'm gonna take this chest back to the starting town. I'm gonna walk right up here and I'm gonna drop the chest. Wherever it's hiding in my inventory. There it is. I'm going to store, fix it, spray foam. All of these books. The quilted shawl. Eh, I will keep all of that. I'm just going to sell it. All of these. Because there's nothing I can do with them just yet. I will keep everything else. Trying to save weight in my inventory. Let's examine those strange tubes and the artifact in my inventory. It's a masterwork. A uh, nanophenumic hammer. That's also a pretty good item to get early. A set of mechanical wings. Oh, shit! Hot damn! If I get a pickaxe, that's gonna make um, Golgatha very easy. <laughs> I can now fly. Look at that. Just don't fly too close to the sun, Shaku. Problem is, I don't really have a good way of powering this thing right now. It's also a cudgel class weapon, which I don't have any points in right now. Um, that's not what I wanted to do at all. I thought that there was a hotkey combination to jump directly to this screen, but I guess I don't remember what it was. Um, all right, so let's scroll around in here. Ex uh, yeah, I'll just be end up selling those arrows, probably. Is there anything in here I actually want to keep? I think I'll chuck these two in here, and we're just going to sell everything else. Now it's going to blink forever, because I attacked it once. Unless I attack something else, I think. Yeah, because then it'll target that instead. That's fine. Um... All right, so you were going to trade with you. How many slugs do you have? Not Like, none? Okay, fine. Uh, buy these, please. I might keep the stun rods and then just disassemble them later. Hey, you know what? Actually, nah, let's not bother. Let's just sell. Sell, 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 sell. Sell those. And just wish that this dude had better armor. Or like a better sword. <laughs> like stuff that I would use. But he really doesn't. Weird artifact it is then. Not that one, though. Maybe this one? Buy this weird artifact and get a couple extra drams on top of it, and then he makes money, and I get the artifact. All right, what, what this artifact? I think I broke it. Great! <laughs> Excellent. I could fix it. Right. 
how full is my inventory now? 126 pounds. All right, we're in, we're in a much better spot. Let's go back to the rust wells and cook a real quick meal, which is rhythmic scrap crystal, an exalted hunk of cheese. Gotta love the exalted hunk of cheese. And a smidgen of traveling gunpowder. Which gives me plus six move speed for the rest of the day. Well, thank you, game. So you have to be careful with Quidzos, because touching them rusts your weapons. So for the Quidzos, I'm mostly going to be uh, killing them with my lasers from my eyes. Or just ignoring them. the best reason to have like brain lasers so you can kill all the quidzos <laughs> yeah that's fair and i just wait and let a bunch of turns pass and a shot of exploring and let's move down so we need to pick up copper wire for this quest or just you know gun because I do actually have ammo now. That's 10 feet of copper wire. It's 20 feet of copper wire. 30 feet of copper wire. This dog is friendly. But it's about to die. We're just going to move down pretty quickly. Whenever I find stairs, I'm going to move down. Because there's a bunch of wire down at the bottom. Which is what we're actually going for. All right, uh, so we leveled up again. We're now level eight. And apparently I want to name my gun. So, um, chat room, name my gun. Hi, Shark Jumping Walrus. How you doing today, dude? Big iron. Did you mean to write pew pew? Or did you intentionally leave those peas out? For some reason, my brain is just going directly to the um, classic piece of American poetry. My black anaconda don't want none if you ain't got buns, hun. But I don't think that would fit. The sex pistols. Why don't we just call it then because that is like the best sex pistols cover band i've ever seen uh in vancouver here we have a a, a sex pistols uh, cover band called fuck guns which is very funny to me resolution oh is it a resolution solution death speaker big big iron seems to be a popular one lots of people are saying that the pp pee hmm Maybe, maybe not. I was going to grab my PP duck, but it's too far away. Bigger iron. Judy McFace shoot. I mean, that's more the bullet. What, fuck guns? I mean, it's, it's fantastic. I, I like um, cover bands whose names are a parody of the band that they're covering. You know, like fuck guns instead of like that. It's got helping hands. Two more chances to strike. Nice. Game is fantastic, yeah. The Negotiator. Mm -hmm. I like that. Purple Potamus. Now the question is... What color? Well, I mean, actually, uh, Purple Potamus came up with it, so maybe Dark Magenta? Although, we all know that the best color in the game, very much so, is, um, where is it? Looking for bees and not seeing it. Ooh, there's new colors! Anyway, the best color in the game is bees. I'm too lazy to look for it. 
Lighter dark magenta, chat. Cryogenic, it is a chrome gun. You're right. Also, Astor camouflage would be pretty good. Or Arctic camouflage would be pretty good for a gun, too. White would also be gun good, too. Gray would also be good. Cloudy would also be good. You see bees? Oh, there it is. Yeah, bees, best color. <laughs> um, we're stuck in an ad. I think I'm going to take Arctic camouflage. And we will wait until the ad is done. I like how it removed the the from it. Thanks, game. Chat room, can I get a round of happy birthdays at Cutest Ghost? Happy, um... Successful resolution around the star that we are orbiting. And also, yeah, happy birthday, Half-Life. Although, wasn't that a few days ago? Escaping from your mama's belly. I'm pretty sure you didn't escape from your mama's belly. I'm pretty sure your mama willingly expelled you from... Or maybe unwillingly expelled you from her belly. It's your first time being put in detention. They cut you out? Okay. Well, then, unwillingly. <laughs> They had to pull you out. I uh, did such a good job escaping that my dad missed it. You really were cut out for this? Wow. <laughs> There's levels to that joke. I, I appreciate that one. To say you're, slightly, you're a slightly higher number. I'll be honest, I forget how old I am. And then, like, my birthday happens. I'm like, fuck. Oh, God. Give me 30 on my next one, though. That'll be hard to forget. Shout out to the person who bought me a coffee, by the way. Appreciate you. Was it November 19th? Oh, for some reason, I thought it was two days earlier than that. Well. Happy birthday, Half-Life. At what point does Half-Life graduate from half to full? Ask, asking for a friend. Like how how like when it when it hits 100 years old is it a full life? Oh, yeah, no, it's just another day. Tree Man, you are correct. All right, we're th we should be through ads for everybody. So we've named our revolver negotiator. And I'm going to shoot this cannibal and then stab him with my sword. He tries to bite me, and he misses. And then I get a little pittance of experience for it. And... I murder the plant with my brain lasers. God damn it. I can't murder the plant with my brain lasers because the angle it's at. I tried to murder the plant with my brain lasers, but the game wouldn't let me, okay? Bleh. Good job to the bat that killed the sappy quidzo. Cannibal hits me for one damage. Keep hitting it. Heal and clean my stuff. Zap plant to death. So we have, what, 30 feet of wire? 50 feet, there we go. We now have 80 feet of wire. 
It's also always good to have some ranged weapons because if you are a melee only character, you can't actually hit flying enemies. That's an interesting statue. Shrine to Desith, the Fuchsia Inkwell. I think this is new, but uh, we have an item to go hunt down. Waist deep in the lake of data disc, discs, Desith cemented her friendship with swine by marrying Quaymemgia Watasamnazir. To honor the occasion, the swine bestowed Desith with a wedding gift, and they called it Joinukus Swindower. We discover uh, the information about the character, but not the location of the item. That is a legendary item that exists in the world, and uh, if we're able to... Uh, find more information about it from other shrines, we may be able to go acquire it. Which would be cool. I'm going to rest until morning. If it lets me. Oh, we are in morning now. Alright, let's auto explode. Next floor is bottom floor. Let's just move down. Odor. And as far as the rust wells go, the rust wells are pretty useful. Sunder his mind. Stab him. The rust wells are pretty useful place to acquire crafting materials, but that's pretty much it. Outside of these early game quests. Like they are an all right place to get some crafting materials but not too much outside of that. Six bits, you found a strange item you really want to repair. Uh, you're Because I have no idea where you are, and because I haven't encountered the mechs yet, I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. Uh, I'll tell you this, it's in the tinkering tree. I would look it up on the wiki. Okay, so there's a wire strand, but there's something else there. So, light is actually coming down from the sky, which is why it's so bright right here. Oh, it's a graduation cap. Look at that. A square back black cap with a gold tassel. And it gives you plus one intelligence and one ego. That would actually be a good hat for me to wear. I'm going to equip it. I'm going <laughs> to just walk around with a friggin', like, graduation hat. That's funny. Also, um, I need 200 feet of wire. We have 180 feet of wire. Let's wait for this thing to kill it. I'll just walk around it. Robit! Hello, Robit. It's a scrap shoveler. Their hull, time decked with verdigris. Raptor arm likes driven by gears are end capped instead of hands by a shovel and a hacksaw. Let's trade, beep boop. He's got nothing to trade. Live and remain ever rustless. Dangerous place for a robot to be. You know, I'm not afraid of Quidzos. I am endlessly annoyed by them, though. It's weird. There's normally, like, um, a scary water critter down there, but there isn't. God damn it. I also could f just fly out. Actually, you know what? We're just going to do this. <laughs> um, going to turn on flying with my mechanical wings. And we're just going to move up. Move up. And up. Hey, what? Oh. 
How did I end up through a... Fl did, did it toggle off early? I think it did. Um, we are going to toggle fly off. And I'm just going to go down to the next rust well, which is right here. Because there's three of them, I'm going to toggle fly on. I'm going to move forward, down, forward, 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 down. Oh, shit. Up. <laughs> Never mind. And, and down. Okay. Do not want to land directly where that creature is. Fly is now off. We landed flat, but we can now walk. Just looking for wires. Hmm. Are you sitting on top of it? What is a quidzo? It's a real life plant, but in the video game, it's a plant that desperately wants you to die. And it rusts your items when you touch it. Ow. Man. Imagine almost dying to a very low-level enemy. What the hell? That was painful. So, I'm not going to lie, I don't like this rust ball very much. There's no wire in the center. Generally, they have wire in the center, but this one doesn't. All right, I'm just going to fly out of this one. We're just going to go to the other one. Um. Ow. <laughs> ah! Oh, that's incredible. Oh, that's incredible. Did you guys see what just happened? Took off, got shot by... Uh, what hit me? All to the ground. Do, 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 do. Open arrow. Something shot me. Um... So it just put me back right at the start of that. You got hit mid-air and crashed for 172 damage, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well that that's hysterical. Crudzo refuses to speak to me. It's okay, I would too. That's that's very, very funny. But that's why we're playing a roleplay run, folks. Because Cud is not afraid to kill you. I just need... Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. It started me at the beginning of all of them. That kind of sucks, but it's fine. It's kind of weird how it didn't... It counted the first rust well as... Completed, but not the other ones. That's odd. That's very odd. You found a cave vendor? I, I mean, you can look at his... Um, what do you call it? Is, is faction alignment like any other character. Check his faction alignment and that, pretty much. We're going to go to the bottom one. Wet folded carbide axe, this and this. And we now have enough wire. So I can turn fly back on. And fly away. Now we head back to Yapa. And I'm still flying. 
Okay, now stop flying. I was just trying to collect enough wire so that I could go talk to Ardvi and give him the wire. So we've officially died three times, if anybody's keeping count. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, three, twice. We've officially died twice, if anybody's trying to keep count. Um, okay, so let's trade. Dude's got, by the way, Argvi, if you're looking for um, schematics, well, not schematics, but data disks, which let you craft stuff, Argvi's the guy to talk to. Uh, take the wire. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful wire. Oh, before I forget, or cease to care, um, I repaired an old recoiler for you. Uh, use it whenever you wish to return to Yapa. Now, qu quickly, give, give me a few minutes to attach the wire. We've gained the ability recoil. And we've gained a lacquered Yapa recoiler. I don't think I've ever gotten a yak lacquered one. We level up. And we've completed the quest. One unofficial death then? I mean, the me flying into the hole is an official death, but I mean, if you want to only count one. But no, I died once. I died once in that uh, city that I went to from the statue that I found, and then I just died in the Rust Wells, but whatever. It's been fine both times. It's working! Genius! They said it couldn't be done. They, they said I was mad. They said we were all... Uh, what what's this? What 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 is that? Wait, it's repeating itself. He mumbles to himself for a few minutes. Apprentice, come here. Something very strange has happened. The conduit is picking up a signal, some sort of repeating transmission. I cannot decipher it. However, I I, I like the crypto gull eggs and whatever. Uh, never mind that. I have a great task for you, my apprentice. Do you accept it? Can I know what it is first? He responds. Very well. You must seek out Baratham of the Old. He is the eldest and wisest tinker alive. He lives with his followers, the Barathamites, in the cavern called Grit Gate. To the northeast, amongst the ruins of Cud. He will, he will know what to make of the signal. Wendell! I mean, right? Um... Very well. You must see. And then I ask, who are the Barathamites? The disciples of Baratham. Mostly, they are Yushrib. They are like their mentor, mutant albino cave bears with quills. And a thousand years ago, Baratham and his kin crossed the Homus Delta into the heart of Cud. And he has spent centuries fiddling with the tokens of antiquity in his underground workshops. If he cannot decipher the signal, well, no one can. And I accept the quest, and he says, Splendid, splendid. I've recorded the signal onto this disc. You'll need to guard it with your life, I'm afraid. I'll, also, I'll need to rig up a droid scrambler for you. The Barathmites have programmed several way droids to guard the approach to Great Gate. With the scrambler, you'll have no need to wait there. You'll have no need to worry about them. Wait there. And he mumbles to himself for a few minutes. There you go. Now off with you. May you live long enough to do my bidding. Away, away. You cannot keep watching. We'll see you later, Nimlark. Thank you much for hanging out. All right, we now have a droid scrambler and a data disc, and we are going to go to Tam. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to go to Tam. I'm just going in the general direction of Tam. I'm going to stop here, and then I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab... Oops, nope, not, that's not what I want to do. I'm just going to grab all... All of the books. And maybe the hammers, too. And then all of these. And I'm going to go to the clay oven. I'm going to eat fresh apple mats. Which makes me thirst less. And now we are going for a long run. We're going north. Oh, I found some ruins. And of course, we're going to stop at any ruins we find along the way. You had them in your inventory and they attacked you? I don't think you... You, you don't need to equip it. Some of them might attack you, and if you start attacking them, they will definitely attack you. But do you necessarily need to attack them? No, and it, it doesn't need to be equipped. 
Unless they've changed that, which I don't think they have. We'll just explore this ruin. Can I zap them all? It doesn't really matter. Although I'm staring at the inventory, and if they have painted gear, I won't zap them. Because then... Uh-oh, you have a shotgun. Well, that's a little scary. Not actually that scary, but... Sunder him through the walls. Three bullets, though. Ron's long sword. We take the weird artifact. I'm assuming that the weird artifact that he dropped is the shotgun. Oh, never mind. Well, I just equipped it. So I don't even know what I've equipped it, but I've equipped it. I need to re-equip my longsword. Okay, what was the weird artifact? I was trying to examine it. I just hit the wrong button. Oh, it's a pump shotgun. Why would that unequip my sword? All right. Yeah, we're going to the stilt. Gotta get rid of these books. Where did... Oh, there you are. Seems like the bugs are on my side. Yeah, no, I, I like to, I usually do a round of the uh, great farmer's market up in the desert before I go to Baratham. Found some more strange tubes. Let's examine the strange tubes. It's a metal folding chair. Dag nabbit. <laughs> and thanks everybody for all the follows, by the way. You guys are very kind. Eh, can sell it for a bit. Hand axes don't sell for much. I'm hoping there's actually some decent items in here. Ooh. I could take the sturdy studded leather armor, but it would make me take a lot more damage. I will take it, but I'm going to sell it, not use it. Is it persistent forever? Yep. No, you, there's a reason you can make notes on the overworld. Um, bodies will last forever. Like anything that is left anywhere will remain there until the end or until you like stop playing that particular playthrough. I think I just picked up a corpse. Yes, I did. I, uh, he dropped this beaded bracelet and I hit the pickup button out of habit and he picked up a corpse and I'm still almost overburdened. Let's just hit him a couple times. This guy's injured now. And I will laser the rest of you to death. Drop. He had a silver nugget and a bronze mace. That's, silver nuggets are pretty valuable. What are these snap jaws running or doing with valuable items? Kill you. Heading north. It's kind of a shitty uh, ruin. This It's ruins like this, which is why... Uh, Auto Explorer is very useful. Other moccasins, vine wafers, some money. Did I did I grab that? Yes, I did. You just claimed a house in Yapa. Yeah, I mean, someone else will sleep in it, but that is a way to do it. Usually what I end up doing is claiming a ruins in an area with music that I like that's central and close to everything that I'm doing at the time, and then moving my stuff from ruins to ruins. Hmm. Just empty glass bottles. Oh, they have oil. Go back to just explore. And white doggo, hello. So we are moving into the deserts. The ivory sea's dunes are like waves frozen in place. There are cracks in the salt from where the earth blistered by the jeweled sun. Contra contracted and broke, the horizon melts and the, the sky together with the vast plain of the Megoryi, the Great Salt Desert. There are other places where one can find the Great Salt Desert, namely in League of Legends Twitch chats. Let's 
move north. As we watch my money and water drop. Now we've made it to the silt. So there's two things I recommend doing right away when you get here. You walk all the way to the left, and slightly north. It's a vessel with oil in it. There's a shrine to Recef. In 99, Recef adopted Rebecca, administrator of Alabal Palace. She tended the alms for the sick in his name. And um, there is a very generous donation of fresh water here for, uh, for him, which you used to be able to just walk up and grab, but I, I wonder if I need to fly over now. Let's see, can I fly over? I can't fly over the wall. God dang it. That's... Mm. I also dilated time because I hit the wrong button. Oh, yes, I can. Sweet. Uh, I've now stolen the water. <laughs> uh, live and drink water. Uh, uh, show mercy to a wary pilgrim. All right, so we're going to speak with uh, the disciple of the coiled lamb after I stole the water. Um, and he's going to be like, P peace and health in the light s s of the star. Pil of I'm going to read this again. Peace and health in the light of the star. Pilgrim, brood with me on the life of Recef, if you are willing. And uh, then I can select these two, and all of these the things I've learned about Recef, I gain free XP for. Um, and I can ask. A spiritual patron of the kith and kin, who did so much for us, and who leads me and others like me to the path of healing. For above all, he was a healer, and dressed the wounds of the sick, and rid the land of the plagues of gear. He was also a sultan, but he was the last sultan. He unbricked the walls of, monoc of the monocracy so that we could move, pick the berries in the orchids they, in the orchards that they hid. I've got more to ask. What's inside the tent? A quiet shrine, which I stole water from, to the coiled lamb, centuries old, tucked away here outside the marble parapets, the cloak cloaked in dust of time. It's lost to those who'd sneer at the veneration of Recef over other fathers. Step inside and voice a prayer, if you are willing. Live and drink, priest. Let's see who likes and hates the priest. He's disliked by fungi for cooking them a rancid meal, disliked by winged mammals for disproving of a famous theorem, and loved by the cult of the coiled lamb. How we doing out there, chat? How we enjoying the stream today? Because, uh, Somehow I've been streaming for four and a half hours already. The time flies. It's, all, it's already 2.30 p.m. You enjoy most of them? I also enjoy most of them, speaking of things. So there's another warden here who we're going to go trade some water with. I've really gotten you back in a cut. I am so sorry. Lanix, thank you very much for the five pack of gift subs. Appreciate you, friend. Oh, sweet. Hookah. This person here. Oh, there's no, there's no water in it. Why do the hookahs all have no water in it? This is dumb. Um, but uh, this is this is a quest giver, by the way. So keep that in mind. Currently, the, uh, the, the Esther Warden is sleeping. So I can start screaming uh, cultish fanboyism. I could uh, ask about the place. I could talk about the number of people. I can ask if this is actually a giant kraken, or I can share water with them, which I'm probably going to do. But let's check first. They're disliked by bears. That's fine. Bears already hate me. For giving them an uh, unfavorable horoscope reading. Rating. Uh-oh. Horses are kind of mean. That could be annoying. Chat room, can I get a round of beers for the very kind five pack of gift subs? And also because Bastet asked for a round of beers. And there hasn't been a round of beers yet. Only Stone has posted beer. But you're playing Cud and Slay the Spire? Isn't that just like the meme? It's like you, you, you spent like $5,000 on a gaming PC. What are you playing? Roller Coaster Tycoon! Anyway, um, so... There's a saying among the vent the vinters who hoist their sails towards the silt. One rose is fair. 
five is death. Indeed, with a single shawl swaths her face, and the esthers are gone, their peace beneath the silt. But when she's joined by her sisters and scarlet ribbons thrash in the desert air, there is only blood and justice. All right, so we are going to do a water witch ritual with her once I wake her up. Your thirst is mine. My water is yours. Share water with Warden Zester and begin the ritual. Yep. Eh. Mm. So I can ask her to teach me how to cook a meal. I can ask for a secret, or we can wait. We gonna wait. We gonna wait. We gonna wait. Live and drink, water sisters. This is the six-day silt, huh? It's colossal and beautiful. I see why the chrome stewards gather here. Then you're not of the faith yourself, huh? Me neither. Do go inside, though. She's a beauty. Got dyed glass high in her rafters, and she does, she does, and two marvelous carvings on the wings, plus a light sculpture of the god, of, of a god. Hear the sermon, too, as you like. The high priest is persuasive, but not half as persuasive as the cathedral herself. In beauty, there is power, you know. Either way, while you're in the cathedral or the silk rounds, stay peaceful, or they will kill you. Chat, post another round of beers. Nyers asks for it. Also, for those of you who are new here, uh, the word beer in many different languages works to post beers. The, the bot will repost it, as well as the follower emote Crypt Burr, uh, as well as various other beer emotes from around Twitch. Um, now that you're... No, 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 no. Hmm. So many folks. Aye, aye, the clamor of all can overwhelm. The glow crows say, as the glow crows say, "'Twas a bird god who taught folks to gather like this." In large flocks. So blame birds. <laughs> what a grand bazaar. What's in each of these tents? Are you mad? You think I keep a tally of every shopkeeper that steps foot into the silt grounds? Well, they come and go as they please. You've got merchants of all types. Wine sellers, honey hawkers, book binders, cobblers. Have a look around yourself. Following the road around the silt, there are tents the whole way around. Live and drink warden they really need to clean some of these prickle bushes right here and oh my freaking god the librarian is a gelatinous cube <laughs> oh, man last time it was a pig this time it's a gelatinous cube In the narthex of silt, cloistered beneath the marble arch, and close to her argent fathers, she muses over a tattered codex. She's safe here, but it wasn't always that way. As a young lion, her kind understood little. Only when she was gifted a copy of the Canticles Chromatic did she learn comfort, or mirth, or reason. She probably also dissolved it inside of herself. Uh, her journey to the silt took several years because she can't move because she's a cube of gelatin. But now that she's here, Sheba seeks to con consolidate all the learning of the ages tucked away in Cud's innumerable chrome nooks. In my mind, she's storing them inside of herself. Um, that's very funny. And also, <laughs> she absorbs all knowledge and also people. Yes. She's shaped like a wedge of cheese. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, anyway, here she prepares residence where pilgrims can study the wisdom of others and bring themselves nearer to the divinity of the Casperescence. <laughs> she is sitting somehow. Uh, live and learn, wanderer. I don't know what a wedge of gel gelatin sounds like, so I'm just going to read this like a normal person. Have you come across any books or scrolls in your travels, and do you care to donate one to the Cathedral Library? Whenever you return, you may speak to me and read anything you've donated. I'm going to donate everything but the Illuminated Tome, because those sell for a lot more. It's also pretty low in XP. God, that's very funny. And we level up. <sighs> that's very funny. I'm famished. Oh, God. 
I'm going to light a campfire in the middle of the church. And then put out the campfire. And then attack the campfire until I destroy it because I'm embarrassed. Um... Psychic projection voices? Oh, probably, yeah. Viscous? I would imagine that to be a very moist, slobbery sound, if it's viscous sounding. I'm going to say something that I said in the last stream I did of this game. This game makes me really, 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 really sad. Partially because I really, really like this game. But mostly because... I know that this game is never going to be seen by his, by the, a lot of the people that would potentially enjoy it because of the con like the type of game that it is. All right, thanks for, uh, did, here's the question. If you put some of the gel in your ears, would it also clean out your eardrums? Like the most effective ear cleaning ever? Like it just dissolves all of your earwax in the process? They're making it 3D next update for 1.0. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure. Uh, we speak with the preacher and the preacher, preacher says, we are forever in their debt. All right, Priesty, who like you? Holy shit, I want your crystal shard mail. Hated by the villagers of Ubikish, for some reason no one remembers. Hated by the villagers of Shawan for giving one of them an unfair, favorable horoscope reading. And hated by the villagers of Ubikish for casting doubt on their beliefs. Wow, it's hate, hated times too by them. Sheesh. This is a statue of Bell, which uh, it wears a tremendous weight in polished marble. He wields an apocal aegis stored for obstructing swirl a swirling gas cloud in the starry dawn. But the thing I actually want to look at is this. Here is an exquisitely detailed high relief cut from precious Carillion marble. It depicts the sacred joining as recounted by Shekinath, the father of the, te of the temple high priests. In the early dawn of our universe, the Argent Fathers roamed the timeless ether. With inert hearts there, the cold in the coldest distance of space, they discovered beauty in chrome, incarnate, a casphorescence. Together, they wrought machines from her naked womb and in to inhabit a hundred Earths. And in the scene here, the Fathers first approach her radiance, and they led Shekinath, who occupies a position of prominence. The writing and lore deserves so much praise. It really does. Like, I, I said this once before when I when I had um, one of the writers in my chat, and I also told um, Jason this at PAX, which is, I would pay a lot of money for a book written in the lore of Cud. Especially if it was like a, like an omnibus kind of like Tales from Cut or whatever. Like, just like a, 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 a collection of short stories. I would, I would pay a lot of money for that. And then bonus points if they let me uh, do the audiobook for it. Although I would mispronounce half the words. That would be very unwise of them. Wait, what, what, is, is what a procedural generation sort of thing? Here, Shakana has been sculpted into permanence with magnificent Carillion marble. His body is chiseled to blessed perfection. And his golden diadem crowns him father among fathers. First thought is to add oil to them. Fix it spray foam or uh, you need tinkering skill. Or you can pay some people to fix it for you. Arden Father's first father poses in luminous mummery, 
with a structure of the ageless stars. Fixed and permanent, he praises the temple erected in his honor and cocks his head in approval. Benefiting the memory of his union with the Casferescence, he clothes his manifestation in Carillion shades, forsaking the Viridians and the russets of the lowly plants and clay earth. Carthex is an athlete depicted in mid-strive. His glistening silver hair is tied behind his head. In astral tradition, he vaults through the firmament. Recef was called the above, and lifts an enigmatic finger to heal the wounds of the sick. Norsich Star Mason depicted here straddling the earth with mighty legs. Please don't crush us with your thighs. Anyway, he dons his favorite sash, whose folds are exquisitely worked in gold. Dagon the Operator domineers the West Aps. Asp? Aps? I, with brazen pose, his golden coronet shines splendidly in the fire's shine. Global Thunder Thighs, even. So, all of the quest dialogue is static, Tree Man? The books are procedurally generated, and the rest of the writing is, um, well, it depends on the character. Like, the, the, the quest dialogue is all static and the same from run to run. But, um, the book dialogue, depending on the type of book, may or may not be, um, standard from run to run. Lacquered, lacquered studded leather armor could be okay. Slate frock. Honestly, steel plate mail would be real good. <laughs> or even actually chain mail would probably be the best for us, actually. But only one, not two. Here, buy all my other armor that I'm not going to use. And these two pairs of moccasins. Mm. There we go. Let's do that. The armor will have to pony up seven drams of fresh water, so we get a little bit of water on top of it. Now remove this, and we now get chainmail, which is a not a bad little upgrade. Apples, that sign. The gun sign. So gunsmith. Please sell me all of your slugs. And since I already have a chrome revolver, I should just buy two, shouldn't I? But I'll probably find another one pretty quick. Two drams for all the bullets. Yes, please. Bullets are a pretty easy thing to learn to make, too. Second mural, aren't they the same? I'm pretty sure both of the murals are the same. Oh, it, the, the sacred joining. Argent Fathers molded a prismatic metal. As for instance, set of his fit into the inhabitants of the mortal folk, and then they wrought the spires into mountains. Oh, no, it is different. Um, it depicts the edification as chanted in the Canticles Chromatic. After the sacred joining, the Argent Fathers molded in plasmic metal of the Casferescence into edifices fit for inhabitants by mortal folk. They wrought the spires into mountains and arches over rivers. Here, Shekinath oversees the construction, gazing east upon his new gleaming world. There we go.
Also, I gotta say, today is the first time in my entire life that I've been called um, prejudice for asking somebody to leave their edgy memes at the door. <laughs> it's been a bit, so I feel okay stating that now, but that's very amusing to me. All right, so let's see how much your wine costs and if you have any books. Kinda want the boiling eastern, boiling the eastern bush. Cause that's a book that'll teach you something. It'll teach you a crafting recipe usually. Yes, the, the fathers lived before the creation of the world. The fathers are either gods, aliens, or some spacefaring folk, depending on where your brain go with the lore. Um, and the sultans came after the fathers came to cut, basically. This is an apothecary, which is one of the things I was looking for. They sell witchwood bark, which aren't the cheapest, but it's good to have wit witchwood bark. Witch which would bark, and I'm also going to buy two yuck wheat, so this is actually going to be kind of an expensive purchase. I'm going to sell you this illuminated book, that armor that I don't need, the uh, wooden arrows that are worthless. And the nanophonic jack. Also buy that salve injector, which is also a little bit on the pricey side, but that's fine. Like, you need to remember that Cut is, like, post-sci-fi in a lot of its stuff. Can I also say that it's really funny that I can just straight up sell a quest item and just, like, screw myself over? I'm, I'm very amused by this. It's also got honey. I don't want to buy that many drams of honey, though. Not a, I'm also not going to need, need those for a little bit still. Which would bark wood? Yes. Which would bark? Yes, dogwood. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. Thank you. Very funny. Can you wash the bloody things? Uh, if it's stained, not necessarily, but otherwise, yes. It's the schematic shop. Someone was asking about schematics earlier. Here's a shop that sells schematics. Like I said, the price is very depending on what it is. This is the chef. This is what I was looking for. One dram of honey. Um, if I need honey later and if I haven't found any, I'm going to buy honey from this guy probably. Because I will need honey. I'm also going to need some skill in cooking. Actually, maybe that's the tree I'm going to start up. The cooking tree. Let's grab harvestry first, and then we'll grab butchery and spicer after that. So I'll need that for a upcoming quest. Oh boy. I hate these things. These things. Seed sprouts. Very annoying. <laughs> annoying little critters. But um, to answer your question, Imirin, uh, if you jump into your inventory and you go to water and you select it, um, okay, never mind, I was wrong. There's a clean all items option. Maybe I need a dirty item to do that. Anyway, there, there is a option to clean all of your items. I'm just not sure how to do that at this exact moment. <laughs> I realize I'm very helpful in all cases with this video game. Uh, spiced cider. Mm. Someone I'd want to trade with in real life. I have no idea what the map for the background is. Like, genuinely, I, I don't know what the significance of it is. I've never asked, never looked, never thought about it for longer than a couple of seconds. I mean, what for? There's some things that need salt water. Are you asking if you can drink it or sell it? It's worthless, if that's what you're asking. 
Magma Spice Yogurt. Gain the ability to toast. Ah. <laughs> it's a familiar feeling when someone has watched you from the past. When it's light, that's betrayed your presence. You made a friend in the darkness. You pulled your hat brim low over your eyes and you stepped behind cover, a thatched wall. But those who watch you now watch you in spite of such a simple obstruction. Their sight isn't mediated by the rays of a gleaming star or torch, but by something much older. If there are ways to conceal yourself from these seeing eyes, if there are new kinds of darkness to befriend, you know nothing of them. How did I gain glimmer from this? Because I gleaned an ability which increased my overall glimmer. It'll go away though. Use pyrokinesis at level two. Damn, that's a powerful little meal. Bet you this will teach me that. I'm gonna try and buy that book from him. I mean, I got plenty of money. Not too much of a problem. Yeah, 107 drams. All right. Two silver nuggets. And one copper nugget. So the green books, when you read them, one serving of fermented yonder cane and one dram of slime will teach us a slime over thick um, uh, fermented yonder cane. Can use teleport and other at... Uh, uh, Teleport other at level one to two. If you already have teleport other, it is enhanced. Okay. And uh, one dram of lava. Good luck. And uh, one dram of cider. Can use pyrokinesis at level one to two. If you already have pyrokinesis, it's enhanced by two to three levels. So now I know both of these and I have the book, which means I can either sell it or donate it to the library and get XP, which I'm going I'm to donate it to the library and get XP. So basically right now, Okay, because um, your your psychic glimmer is a combination of your stats, right? Um, so because I got pyrokinesis, which currently is considered pyrokinesis level five, it added five, which which bumped me above twenty, which is how you get the psychic glimmer. And uh, we also found a painted pitcher, uh, which is empty, um, and uh, it's got life from the ancient sultan of Zershid, who I'm starting to think might be another constant because. Or a new constant because I've seen them a lot. Uh, at the Battle of Nepper of the Nepper Spire, Zershid fought as a mercenary sultan to subjugate birds. He wielded a clever dagger with such artfulness that it became forever known as the Clerica Bird's Bane. Birds aren't real, so that's fine. What was this dude? Mechanist Coraler sitting. Uh, because of the type of game it is, most people will never discover it or give it the chance to discover it. It's also got Shining Meals. I could just go through and buy all of these books, but... Eh. Explore this area. The type of game it is is just going to inherently limit the possible audience that this game will have, and this game's writing is incredible. And I know a number of people who I know would really very much enjoy this game... And I've recommended it to them, but they won't ever play it because... What the fuck? Why are those leeches psychic? Anyway, um, I know that they'll never play it because of the type of game it is. Also, if you want cheap bullets, by the way, um, pro tip. Go to this area and trade with the guns. But uh, it, it, it appears that uh, I can't actually trade with them, which is a shame. Oh, no. No, I can. Oh, wow. Because these are laser turrets, they actually sell batteries. Because they'll sell whatever they have, right? So these are laser turrets, so they'll, they'll sell batteries, which is actually probably pretty good batteries, too. Yeah. Huh. How to get a bunch of batteries? Go trade with laser turrets. The more you know. <gasps> Free honey! Gimme! 
Don't mind if I do. Picking up liquid is not a crime. Thank you, kind honey weep. The honey weep cannot carry things. And it indicate it has no indication of understanding. <laughs> Why is honey so great? Honey, it well, one, it's a very powerful trade resource, and two, if cooked in a meal, it's a natural medicine in this game. So yuckwheat and honey are both natural medicines. So if you cook them into a meal and eat it, you get a higher chance to not get infected with diseases uh, when going into areas that are rot with disease. And there's a lot of areas in this game that are rot with disease. So basically when going into harder dungeons, you cook meals with honey and yuckwheat and it gives you a higher chance to dice rolls to not get sick when going into those areas. That's what it is. Um, you sell data disks, you sell cybernetics, so that, that one's useless to me because I am not a true kin. And that is a friggin' salt kraken, I think. No, it's a gr gershworm. Looks like a salt kraken. Neferenda belch and quiver along the stiff tube of its outsophagus? Outsophagus. Mm -hmm. uh, and its sate are damp and sucking roots, and its segments push and pull to moon time. I don't know what moon time is, but I'd like to learn what moon time is. Yes, we are Eurus the Tourist. And for those of you who subscribed at a tier that costs too much money, uh, we even have a Eurus the Tourist emote. I think it's a tier 2 emote. Maybe it's a tier 3 emote. I can never remember what tiers my emotes under are under. I'm being honest. Remember, pre priests always sell bullets. Yeah, cut off three of eight of the honey spawns. And I don't think they um, endlessly output honey anymore either. So if I come back in a week, they, there still won't be any honey there. Also, there's kitties everywhere. Gotta pet the cat. Shies away from me, sad. It growls at me. Okay, fine, cat. I mean, you're at tier one. So, don't work. But solid, solid try. Yeah, no, you need... I see, see the two or three. True Dungeoneers take their antioxidants before delving into deep dungeons. I mean, that would be smart. I love that there's just a... One of these guys here. A hired guard. Gear weight? Really? He's got rank fangs. It's a biped mannequin. I don't recall seeing a blue mannequin before. Shopping has never been so serene. Uh-oh. You've discovered a way to conceal yourself for now. So that means the meal wore off. I no longer have uh, too many mutations. Although, I guess the question is, I, I need another agility point. I guess the question is, do I buy a new mutation? Because I can actually do that. I have four mutation points. Um, which would just basically give me a permanent psychic glimmer. That is literally what they are, Corn. You hit the nail on the head. They worship the plague. It would be like if a cult formed around COVID-19. Or maybe something worse than that. Ebola? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, like, their whole goal was to just, like, release it to places. That, 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 is, that is what they are, yes. Can can they even fire after? Uh, so fun fact: if you remove, if you trade with turrets and remove all of their bullets or batteries, no, they cannot fire. And dries up oceans and kills crops. Yeah, 
basically. It would be like worshipping locusts or... Worshipping global warming? So most of Texas. Um, we're in an ad right now. I'm going to uh, take a piss and eat a boiled egg, and then I'll be right back. Yeah, we do kind of have a lot of that. You're right. I mean, there's a lot of allegories in games like this, right? And this game definitely has its fair share of this is a thing that is, like, representative of something that is in our world, but presented in a way that makes you think, right? I really like that kind of media. I, I think that it's a really good way to explain things to people is here is a thing that is written in a way to make you think about this thing, but it isn't directly writing with real word, world terms or whatever. And I think that that's what makes writing like this so powerful. You know what's... I, I just saw this comment on my YouTube channel, so it's at the front of my brain. It will never under... like, fully makes sense to me why people think that children in Dwarf Fortress don't respect Burrows. They do. They very, very much do respect Burrows. But they don't respect Burrows until they're done playing. Which is like... Playing can last for like two weeks. And <laughs> so they don't... And if they are going to play, it's considered a, an uncancelable job. And because they don't cancel jobs, they will go to that location and play regardless of the Burrow. Just like all other Dwarves will finish their job. It's just children have one of the longest-term jobs, which is playing make-believe. So you give the children somewhere to play make-believe all the time, and then they'll never be outside. Basically, you have to give them their own burrow with their own location system. Otherwise, they will simply ignore the burrows, which... because they're children. I don't know why that bothers people. It's, it's a pretty simple mechanic to understand, but... All right. I just learned you can move this the camera around with the mouse. That's bizarre. All right, uh, let's... I've basically done everything I need to do here. I have to make kids a playpen? That is a solution, yeah. All right, so we are now... I discover a lair. Would I like to investigate? Sure, why not? We've discovered the location of Thy... Thyfartha? Aclitus. Aclatus? The legendary salt hopper. And I'm going to immediately leave that location. We discover some forgotten ruins. Okay, I need to find out. Are horses going to try and kill me? Phew. Oh, I was very worried about them because um, they have this... Be because I, I did a water ritual with somebody who was hated by horses, so I was very worried that horses would try and kill me because they're pretty mean. Um, shadow A shadow inches over a dull white carapace. 
of a giant cave-born crustacean. Its eye stalks have shrunk to nothing in sundim grottos of the underneath. Do you have enough mind to sonder? Turns out you do. Magic. You don't have enough mind to sonder, so you I will just laser with my eyeballs and then stab with a sword. Let's see what this zone had. Oh crap, I forgot to donate those other books. Ah well, we'll just run back. No biggie. Hey, free water! Holy shit! 118 drams of fresh water? Damn, dude. That's a lot of money. I'm rich. <laughs> and now I've been impaled by a spike. I'm going to kill that spike. Yeah, I'm now at 239 water. Worth it. Oh, wait. Why, why, why table red? There's nothing on that. No, I want to look at it. Oh, it's... In between, is what the graffiti on the table says. Holy shit. I just got another, like, 100 grams of fresh water. 54 and 49. This area must be a, a freshwater spring or something. Dramatic? I mean, mate, come on. All right, well, anyway, running back up here to go give those books back. Oops, sorry. Ow. Chat, I, have you ever died by just, like, accidentally walking into those? All right, we are going to now... Actually, I'm lost. Never mind. I was trying to head home, um, but I instead got lost and then found ruins, and apparently I can mark the... So I'm still lost, so I can't leave. But somehow I was able to mark the location on my map while it's also being lost. So we'll explore these ruins while I'm lost. Because they're here, so might as well explore them. Okay, is there anything inside of this, I wonder? Wink. Nope, just a thick fucking wall. It's good to meet you, Shark Jumping Walrus. Well, we're learning about uh, Polyrarad uh, while traveling through Takish Hall. Polyrarad stopped at a market in Daruk, uh, in Daruk Spire, at an obscure shop and purchased an electric pair of boots and named it Electricus Polyradboon. There, he went to a nearby tavern and lost Electricus Polyradboon in a game game of dice and cursed the tavern and left. Seems like all of these sultans have a gambling problem. So we found the location and a quest to recover that item. Are there pools of endless fresh water? No, but there are mushrooms that will output fresh water. Uh, these guys want me dead, so I will laser their faces to death with face lasers. And I leveled up. And, uh... I can check here. I need 17. Actually, no, I just, I need more agility. All right, let's buy a new mutation. Yes, we are now a burgeoning, uh, which means we cause plants to spontaneously grow in a nearby area, hindering your enemies, um, which gives us a lot of repu reputation with the Consortium of Fighter, which are plant people. And now we are being watched once again. So we now have a Psychic Glimmer. That is okay. And I'm going to level up. Ooh. Light Manipulation would probably also be really good. Sunder Mind would be really good damage. Actually, I need, let's, let's grab Light Manipulation. Just because of the, the how much damage that is for us. 
Okay. So we are going... Discover a lair of Defafa, the legendary salt hopper, which I'm going to immediately leave. Some ruins. You have to be careful in this area. That's a gun that wants me dead. It's now a dead gun. The rifle turret. And I pick up a bent metal sheet and a bunch of bullets, which I'm not going to complain about. We're going to move this way. And we've made it to Grit Gate, where I'm going to uh, preserve my fresh foods and choose ingredients to cook with. We're going to cook with goat jerky and vine wafer sheaf. And uh, we also put some gleaming icor, uh, a gleaming icor merchant's face and a pinch of saffron in the meal. So let me re reiterate. We gather what we can find for our meal. Some goat jerky and some vine wafer sheaf. And we just happen to find a gleaming icor merchant's face. Is it just the skin or do you think that like the skull is still attached? Hmm. I'm going to have to preface this meal with um, an asterisk, I think. We get plus 12 max HP, and we thirst at half rate. There's an angry crab here that wants us dead, so I'm going to throw lasers at his face until he dies. Cease crabifying. No. Die. Okay, so you see the, the, the way droid is friendly, and I haven't equipped anything. So no, you do not need to equip things to have a... To be friend with Waydroid, but they may still hurt you because they do AoE damage. This centipede does not want to die. All right, well we can auto explore this this zone. Um, die, Spoder. Spark tick dies. That's a bear. I shoot it a couple times. Let's uh, shield slam it. Oh, right. Need a shield equipped to shield slam. That makes sense. Laser the bear. Laser you as well. Laser you. Hi, just came back to DF. Your videos are irreplaceable. Thank you. This is just another thank you. Thank you. For keeping that sub alive for a fourth month. Welcome back. And thanks for enjoying the videos. Holy crap, that's a lot of crafting materials. <laughs> um, hmm. grabbing tinkering and then I'm gonna need disassemble see my last message please no I will not because I've already like responded to it so I am not your personal respondent bot Also, I have no idea how to fix your UI. Screenshot, regardless. I, I have no idea how to fix your damn UI. My bet would be restart your game. Or set your settings to default. It's also one of my pet peeves when people say, see my last message, please. Because I probably either A, don't know, or B, didn't respond yet, or C, uh, don't have an answer for you. So, I have no idea. Good luck. It's all good.
That's a lot of free bullets. Also got a weird artifact. It's a fungicide grenade. Got it. Big monkey up there. Don't attack the big monkey. Big monkey scary. Big monkey will kill you. Between the old and new one? I mean... Are you messing with your settings? Just set everything back to default. Yeah, I have no idea, man. Which is why I didn't respond. Got burnt out on this difficult game, gave up. They released a non-permadeath -perm update. They released that update, like, over, like, two years ago. What? Like, genuine statement. They, they released that update a long time ago. Titan boots. Carbine. All right. Sorry, uh, Pew Pew Cannon, but um, Chrome Revolver is getting unequipped. Carboid Longsword. That I'm going to equip, although I'm going to double check to make sure it's in the right hand. It's in the left hand. I don't want it in the left hand because I don't want to be dual wielding. Let's remove that. Remove this. And equip the carbide longsword. That's a pretty hefty damage boost. Well, you also need to, like, talk to somebody who can troubleshoot your game. I have 200 hours in this game and have it set up the way I've encountered. I've never encountered the issue that you're having. So I genuinely have no idea what's causing it and cannot troubleshoot your game. So I am not the person to help you. What was shooting me, then? I'm not going to be able to carry that. I guarantee you that is too heavy. Eh, I'll just leave it. It's fine. And none of this would happen. It's all good. There's the stairs down. Actually, just gonna wait. Segmented null worms are pretty solid XP, but I'm just gonna take friendly fire from the robots. Just gonna walk around. You can die. What got cracked? My rescue midget was cracked. I am going to walk away from that because I don't want to get friendly fired to death. Holy shit. Uh, they don't because they're extraordinarily different games. Rotten. Caves, like, Caves of Cud is a story-based RPG roguelike, right? With some sandboxy stuff if you want, whereas Adventure Mode is just an open sandbox with absolutely no goals or... Uh -oh or named quest givers to speak of. Hmm. Turn on time dilation. 
Haven't played either late yet? Okay, well, they're, they are completely different kinds of games. Let's see if I can walk away from this thing. I might be dead. I do have Witchwood Bark. Chug it. I think. Oh, wait, did I? Luckily did not get... Whew, that was close. Luckily didn't get confused by that. Hmm, I'm gonna pop up a floor. Wait for this stuff to come through one at a time. I think, like, asking how this game compares, like, let, let me see if I can give you a, like, an example. Asking how this compares to Adventure Mode is, ask, is like asking how Kenshi compares to Baldur's Gate. Does that make any sense? It's like Kenshi is just a big open sandbox with not much player direction, but like some goals that you could do if you want. Whereas the other one is a RPG. That's that's the comparison that you're trying to make. So it's a pretty tough comparison. Which one's which though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, like the, this this would be Kenshi in that question. Whereas Balder, or no, sorry, th this would be Baldur's Gate in this quench question, whereas Adventure Mode would be Kenshi. I love how your question, like, confused me as to which one's which. <laughs> uh, let's check this zone. Let's sprint. Run through. Zap you to death. Get the level up. Zap you. Zap the bear. Stab the bear. Rotten, thank you very much for the three gift subs. Appreciate you. I mean, Cud can just be a big old sandbox if that's what you want it to be. Um, but it is an RPG first. Like a big, like, narrative thing. It is that first. And unlike, you know games that market themselves as RPGs like Skyrim, this is actually an RPG. And unlike games that market themselves as roguelikes, like that's a fungicide grenade. Unlike things that market themselves as roguelikes, like I don't know, Binding of Isaac or um, Faster Than Light, FTL, it's actually a roguelike. Cut is so frustrating early on. No, it's not. It's, it's frustrating to learn if you're not used to learning games like this, which I completely understand. But it's actually not that difficult of a game to get into. You just kind of need to know where to go early on. All right. So there is a another Esper right here. This guy also has mind powers. So I'm going to expose your motherfucking face, and um, I'm going to sonder his mind. Sonder these nuts, duder. Watch him, like, mirror it and kill me. See how he bites off the but he dies. Got him. Passed by a steel hammer. He had a steel hammer and a chrome revolver? Wow. Um, I'm now getting electrocuted and stabbed. Um, What? My hotkeys ain't working. Game, are you frozen? Game is frozen. Unless I've managed to hit a key that's making my hotkeys not work. Hmm. I 
I mean, if you want to learn the game now, uh, the way... Sorry, no, the game is frozen, not the game is frozen underscore tier. Although I might start tearing up if it stays frozen. Hmm. Oh, nothing but great things, creator. I mean, if you want to know what stuff like that means, look it up on the wiki, because I'll be honest with you, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so you'd have to look it up on the wiki. Um, I'm not joking. I, I, I'm hitting hotkeys and the game not moving. Um, hmm. So I'm stuck in this menu and cannot do anything. You got an achievement for it? Huh. Yeah, I, also, I, st I still don't know what it means. <laughs> I'm sure it means something, but... I have no idea what that is. Speaking of... I, so, um... The Esper got me... Yeah, the es Esper got me stuck in this screen, that's for sure. Although, ironically, it was... Uh, me trying to use Clairvoyance that got me stuck in the screen? Well, I guess I Alt F4... Hope I haven't lost that much progress. Um, hmm. Does anybody have any ideas on how to get out of this? Because if I Alt F4, I should appear at the top of the location. Hmm. Well, let's find out. Oops, nope, not new game. Force of habit. Oh, good. Didn't lose any progress. Literally just one floor up. I was very worried it would like send me back way further, but it didn't. Also, I feel like I'm zoomed in more, what? Yeah, I don't actually know how that happened, but that seems not good. And meal prep, endurance. Yeah, let's just grab the canyons. We'll do this lore. Just have those. Killed the bear. Auto explore. That's a infiltrator. Huh. Ah. So we found our first Templar. Bobtron, thank you much for the raid. Holy shit, dude. Hey mods. If there's any mods around. Could I get a shout out for Bobtron? Otherwise I'll do it in a moment. Tyrim, can I get a couple beers for Bob and Raiders? Wet skin scintillates behind his ears. His spine camber, chamber, cambers, chambers in anticipation of its blood fated curvature. He pokes out his chin in emulation of his elders. Sword grease stains his hands. Nope, oh, throws a fungus eye grenade at me, which is does nothing. Uh, and then a sleep gra gas grenade at me.
Sunder his mind. Gonna give him some plant friends. And he blocks me. I'm... Hmm. What? I thought that I had... Hmm, apparently I've recently sprinted. Hmm. He's fine. I'm very injured. Um, give me a salve. Problem is, is I'm like stuck here. But now he's wounded, so I'm just going to laze him. He's still alive, but I'm healing because I've taken the, uh, the, 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 the salve and he's dead now. The heal fades, but... Oh yeah, no, there's no way in hell I can carry all that. <laughs> How about the carbide's long sword? And can I equip that? Okay, so I'm going to remove this. I'm going to equip the carbide long sword. Going to remove that. And and equip the steel shield. So I'm still carrying too much to move. Um drop that. I'm just going to stand here until I can see again, and then we can move. But what were you up to today, Bob? I'm not usually on on Sundays. I was, well, so I wanted to do a Friday stream and then realized I had way too much YouTube editing to do to stream on Friday. Then decided to stream on Saturday and asked chat whether Saturday or Sunday would be better for most people. And most people said Sunday, so I decided to stream a bit on Sunday. And then realized after I decided I was going to stream on Sunday that I'd agreed to be on the Dwarf Fortress Roundtable podcast again. So I had to record that at my normal start time and then started when the podcast recording ended. So, so we've killed a Templar and there's a spicy spider here that's going to zap me. So... Really? Are you a real game? Just cracked my chainmail? Wow. Did I bring the fix it spray foam with me? I don't think I did. Well, I will leave that equipped then. Let's we'll see if the shopkeeper can repair this. That is scary, but gives good XP. The giant pig. I will just let these dudes fight. I don't need a part in this. Ow! Stupid... Zappy thing, and now I'm bleeding. What happened to my carbine? Hmm, weird. Like, I thought I had that carbine equipped, but I guess not. Anyway, I have a machine gun now. I can wait until I'm healed. <sighs> kind of reminds you of NetHack? I mean, is is roguelike, so is NetHack, so... 
There is definitely some inspiration there. The novice of the sightless way in the southeast burrows a channel into your psychic ether and begins to sunder your mind. I'm going to... Um, well, I could just zap him with a laser. I'm going to use clairvoyance and fucking shoot him with a gun. Although I seemingly can't hit him, so have eye lasers then. I should also note that the carbine is really strong. Problem is, is I'm going to run out of bullets really quickly. Let's shoot the crab that's like right here. God, there's so much stuff. It's pretty good XP though. Gotta go. Pop in the stream sometime. Looking forward to another video. Videos come out when videos come out. <laughs> or when I make them. Alright. Made it to our quest location. You have no idea how fast you can burn through ammo? As fast as you can shoot. I do have 334 lead slugs, so I'm not too worried. So. Wait, what? The door's already open? I've never seen the door just open, but okay. Be gone, Wayfarer. This is no place for you. I come by the way of Yapa. The, error, the elder Erodad calls me friend. Enter then, traveler. Interesting. My name is Eurus the Tourist, and I bring a message from Argvi of Yapa. A slot opens from the center of the door, and a metal tray slides out. Let me place the disc in the tray. So it seems you are indeed Argvi's apprentice. He wishes you to study with us. Unfortunately, we require more than a willing spirit. Quite is not Yapa, and you will need to prove your worth. That you might not waste our time and efforts. Travel to the Great Cavern Golgotha. To the north, within its halls, you will find a cache of dysfunctional droids. Recover one and repair it, and return here. And if we are satisfied with your work, you will be admitted to our order. Otherwise, you will not be. Do you accept this agreement? Yes. And now we're going to walk this way. It is real fun, Johanning. Welcome to Great Gate, Gelt Delver. Care to enhance your quality, the quality of your stay with a wise purchase. I've been tasked to travel to Golgotha, I say. And, she res and he responds with, my condolence to your sense of smell, friend. Golgotha is an excrutable place in more ways than one. I would advise you not visit without a healthy sack of yuckwheat and honey. And if you can cook a meal with yuckwheat, it may banish a disease before it comes into its own. Bring salves or herbaries too, and mind your feet in the cloaca. What wares do you sell? Oh, I sell whatever sundries meet my standards of quality with some measure of curation, and I try to ensure that my shelves carry a bit of many things, but you can count on finding more than enough ammunition and recoilers that can lead you back here in a difficult time. And if you have anything in need of identification or repair, I can take care of that for you for a few drams as well. I'm gonna take off my armor, <laughs> strips naked. Oh wait, this is before my Right, yeah, because the chainmail cracked and then I went back to a save. Um, because uh, the game, like, hard locked for some reason. Why, this is Grit Gate. Oh, the vaulted halls, the glint of chrome, and the gentle hum of a chain turret emplacements. There is nowhere like Grit Gate in the whole of Cud, friend. I've journeyed in my comparatively short time, but I always return here. And the very, the air buzzes with knowledge as well as quite a few other things. All right, so I'm going to buy a thousand lead bullets. 
I am going to look at this small stone, which is uh, near the location of New Manor. Xerxid was captured by bandits, and he languished in captivity for two years, escaping to sub one. I'm going to buy the small stone. You always want to buy the small stone. And I'm going to buy the pickaxe. In exchange for all this crap, I'm going to give him all of this. Or as much of this as I need to. Wait. Actually, I should probably just sell the heavy stuff that I have in my inventory. Pump shotgun. That and that. The reason my inventory is so heavy is because of all the water I'm carrying. So I'm actually just going to pony up. Oh, wait. Actually, no. I, I don't want to sell you this much stuff. I miss. I completely misread the amount of money that he has. <laughs> or the amount of money that I'm selling him. I'm actually going to just do it this way. You'll have to pony up uh, 44 drams. Yes, that we can do. Which also lowers the amount of weight that I'm carrying. All right. Um, there's a uh, cud lore. Also that. And there's also a Bethesda in this game, and I assure you that it does not just work. But there is an invisible boss in Bethesda. All right, so now that we're free from here, Golgotha is this location right here. I'm going to actually just run all the way back to the starter village, although we find some ruins on the way, so we'll explore those first. I'm gonna go back to the starter location Dump a bunch of my inventory into that chest, including a lot of the water. Eat a meal. And then we're going to go do Golgotha. That is my plan. I found a strange tubes. I have six speed for the rest of the day. Ooh, that meal made me faster. Eight meal became Sonic. Easy peasy. I was kind of hoping there'd be books or something in here. Kind of a crappy... Um, ruin this one. Yeah, nothing there. All right, going back to uh, the town. Run up to my chest. Um. Just going to put those arrows into there. Put that in there. Put the torches in there. A wire. Most of this. Most of this. Um. Iron buckler. Chrome revolver. I'm going to trade all that. And I'm going to clean all of my items using this water here. And just like that, to Golgatha we go. So Golgatha is a lovely, safe place where we can all live in 
peace and harmony, and definitely not die of an anxiety attack. I'm going to take full advantage of my wingsuit after I zap this frog to death, which has frozen me. So we're going to skip most of this dungeon. Which is why I bought that pickaxe. Which I don't even think I need the pickaxe. So, what... I'm going to do... Is I'm going to cook a meal. And we're going to cook with... Oh, no, I need to serve exotic food. The... Yuckwheat stem. And we are going to cook with fermented yuckwheat and a dram of honey. And you'll get ill for one-tenth the usual uh, length of time. That's not, like, the best dice roll ever for that. It's not pretty hard. So I am now flying. Hmm. Well. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to equip this pickaxe. Nice rifle, thank you. Pretty happy with it, to be honest. I was gonna say, what did I just do 615 damage to? So I need to get into those green things at the end here. And I have to get around everything else. That's the primary goal of this, is to just get around stuff. And uh, chat, I want you guys to do me a favor, because I'm not always the best at noticing these sorts of things. We're going to need that, a red security card. If you see me stating, my character stating that I it has itchy skin, um, let me know. Have I played Majael? Yep. Uh, it's uh, turn-based Diablo. What do I think of it? I think the balancing is kind of nutty. Um, that game's a lot. It's pretty hard to stream. I quite enjoy it. Why do you ask? I think Dark God has done a very good job on his game. Should just waited until clairvoyance was back up. It's a shoot crab. This gun's gonna make this a lot easier. You're friendly. Gun die. Why was I expecting that to damage me when I went down? So, we found uh, the side entrance. And we're now at the base of this. So, let me use that. I need to find a broken way droid.
which will be in here somewhere. Do I have this song on vinyl? There is no record pressings of this soundtrack yet, because the game is not complete. Would I buy it if it if they make a soundtrack for it? Absolutely. I'm assuming that'll be a 1.0 thing. So there is big scary boss monster in here. Big scary boss monster is giant sh um, unshelled reptile. If uh, you happen to have a lot of um, or a really good reputation with unshelled reptiles, you can actually make it into your friend. Check clairvoyance. Hmm. I actually, you know, we should just unequip this pick. I didn't actually end up needing it much on the way down anyway. Reequip the shield. Ah, fuck. Oh, I see the problem. God dang it. Oops, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I'm confused. This is rough. At least I'm no longer confused. I should just take the salve. Oof is right, yeah, no kidding. Alright, well. I do not like this area. God friggin' damn it. Can can you can you stop? For a minute, please. Eh. Interesting. The hell is down there. Hmm. Has there always been a hole? in the middle of the fifth floor of Golgatha, or am I misremembering? I can't fly while underground, so... I guess I would need to jump and then fly out? This is very accurate. There ain't no pleasant place called the Cloaca. I'm further in the game than you've ever been. Fair enough. Just lasering these things to death. Okay, but like, jokes aside, where... Maybe I'm not deep enough. I haven't seen any broken way droids. They're normally around this level. But I'm not seeing them. And then norm, like the way I would always get out of here 
is by going out that way that I came in. Top left, usually? New they're usually near trash. Yeah, they're normally near trash, but I've seen several trash piles. I haven't seen one yet. Unless I'm just, like, living up to my username, which is... Wouldn't be too uncommon. Good lord, that's a lot of monsters. How many sewage eels? Oh, for fuck's sake. Maybe I do need to jump into that center hole. Did they add another floor onto Golgotha? Oh my god. If they added more floors onto Golgotha, I'm gonna cry. All right, well. Um, I'm gonna quickly cook a meal. Cook with honey, more yuck. That's what I need. All right. Holy shit, they added more onto Golgotha. Or is this just below Golgotha? Yeah, no, this is just... Ca you, you are correct, yeah. Well, interesting. You know, it's very possible that the way droid is like underneath some loot. There's lots of things that are in the ca in the um, in the trailer. Chips 2016, thanks for the dollar. Appreciate you. Oh hey, it's big boss monster. Oh there it is, bottom left. Question is, can I kill it? The gooey slog of the cloaca. The colossal slug, known as the slog, presides over its fetid domain of the cloaca. It bathes its bloated, slimy body in mole and moiling pools of dross, keeping itself moist and waiting for fresh prey. It's churred into its lair, whereas nature had the decency to end the body of the common slug. The muscular foot slog's trail is instead... A sphincter choked bilage hose that it uses to spew at its prey the filth of the cloaca. Loved by mollusks, hate admired by dromad merchants for providing shelter during a glass storm. It's a shit cannon. Yep. That actually kind of sucks that it's liked by um, the Dromads. I'm going to sprint. I am going to... Oh boy, why did the... Why plants, you guys are not on my side today, apparently. Oh, I'm thirsty. Am I out of water? Did I turn auto drink off? What? Or is it this thing draining my... Th oh, it's this thing draining my thirst, right? 
It's an all-in-one Canon, yes. Um, we are in an ad for some people, so I'm going to wait until the ad ends before I do anything. So I'm just going to sit here for the next three minutes. It's a, it's just a bile cannon, basically. I would like to kill it, but fun fact, you can actually um, convince it to join you if unshelled reptiles like you enough. Thank you for that mental image, a devilish potato. How have you been today? <laughs> Thanks for ruining my day slightly with that mental image, but it's okay. I will live. Mental image aside. Biocannon was your nickname in college? Ah, is that what they called you after you failed the keg stand? Fails keg stand. Ah, yes, it's Nikki, the biocannon. Pack smack the biocannon. Speaking of Biocannon, if nobody has the username Biocannon on Twitch, you should go get the, the username Biocannon on Twitch. I, I'm just saying, Biocannon seems like a good Twitch username. Alright, <laughs> alright, alright. We've got a minute left on the ads, and then we'll finish fighting this thing. Hopefully, I don't get glot rot. Although, if I do, that'll be a fun process, figuring out how to get rid of it. Because the diseases in Caves of Cud, the cures for them change when you generate the world. Good to hear. Devilish. <sighs> Mads will be Mads. I mean, they'll still trade with me, so it's fine. It's not that much dislike they'll get from me. So I guess the play here is to turn on time dilation and go into a defensive stance and then just shoot it and try and keep it at a distance and try and stay out of the liquids so that I don't get bit by more eels. Oh, I am well aware of multiple places in the game to get the book that tells you how to, like, remove the side effects and or cure d diseases, so. Okay, so what, what I need to do is dilate time and go into a defensive stance. I'll fucking shoot it. Actually, let's go this way. It's badly wounded. Mollusks now really hate me. Also, by the way, chat, I'm curious. Does anybody hear know the uh, musical group Nod, spelt with a G. Because if you like this type of music, you might really like Nod. You swell with inspiration to name your oozing sludgy gooey chainmail. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to name it oozing sludgy gooey chainmail. Because it's currently just chainmail. Nod with a G. G N O D. Yeah. Oozing sludgy gooey chainmail. You know, it's it it it's like it's for the memory. O S G O S G C M. O S G C M is my favorite. Like, oh god, what would that even be? Like pop emo band. Definitely would open for M C R. So the oozing, gu sludgy, gooey chainmail is obviously chaotic. No, no, it doesn't. That doesn't check out. Um, I'm 
glot rot, maybe? Yeah, let's glot rot color it. Oozing sludgy gooey chainmail. Anyway, the uh that's the the grotesque the grotesque still undulating husk of slog. Okay, so now that slog is dead, we go this way. And I pick this up. Now, there's a few here that I can repair. And there's two ways out of here. I can use a recoiler to teleport my arse out of here. Or, I can walk up this way, kill this stupid slug, and go to here, stand on this platform, and push the button. The chrome platform begins to hum, and it ascends into darkness. Now we are up here, and I can just flip this switch, which opens the door, and we can walk outside. I am going to go all the way down to my water, clean all of my items, because frankly, I needed that. And I'm going to clean my oozing sludgy dilute sludgy moccasins. And uh, we are now clean. IHQMD, thank you very much for the 14 months. And that's how you clear Golgatha. And then you go up. And you walk down this way. You walk down to here. You walk down. I haven't seen anything about me having an itchy throat, so that's good. Kill that. Eh, okay, let's just... Go this way. Of whatever this content is. Thank you very much for the four months, and thanks for continuing to still watch whatever this content is. Because frankly, I don't know either. And now I can go up to here, and they ask, have you completed the task? And I say, not yet. Because what I still need to do is uh, find the scrapped way droid, hit repair. And now they'll ask, have you completed the task? And I'll say, yes. A slot opens from the center of the door. A bright red light shines through, and several minutes pass. You may enter. Simply walk through the force barrier and make your first two lefts and speak with Otho in his office. Also, wait, hold on. Let me double check first. What, uh, what day you, wh who, everybody dislikes you? Okay. Welcome to Great Grit Gate. I am Otho, Baratham Steward. I apologize for the manner of our introduction, but we must take precautions. Cud is a very unforgiving place. I am pleased to see that you've returned with, a, with the way droid, though you still know little of the dangers you bear. Take this firearm as your reward. It bears the mark of our finest gunsmith, Sparafocal. Return when you are ready to discuss the signal. We've been promoted to the rank of apprentice, and uh, I, I guess I get a better carbine. which we're going to take a look at. This weapon bar bears the mark. Uh, it's a masterwork. This weapon scores critical hits 10% of the time instead of 5%. Sweet. It's also scoped. So it's a better version of my carbine. Um, which I can also unload. Damn it. 
equip. I want to... Why, wait, why did it re-equip? Anyway, whatever. Um, do you wish to discuss the signal? Yes. The signal is a repeat transmission being broadcast from an unknown source. It's been live for over a year, and one of our tinkerers, Q-Girl, discovered it while rigging a long wave detector. Unfortunately, it's encrypted, and we do not have the means to decrypt it. You may be some, of, some help in this matter, however. We've long known the location of a fully functioning Betel within the, within the bowels of the Great Hall Bethesda Susa. The Mechanimists have constructed or, or have consecrated the site around it and built a temple there. Q-Girl claims to have developed a means to decrypt the signal, but she needs uh, the computing power of a beetle. If you can infiltrate the Mechanimist compound, you may be able to engage the beetle and decode the signal. What's a beetle? They are antique stones located in certain places deep within the caverns of Cud. We believe that they have some sort of hyper-advanced machines built by the eaters. Often, one often claims often one claims to possess a sentience of its own. However, most of them have gone haywire in the eons since their creation. It is rare indeed to discover one whose circuitry is wholly uncorroded. Do you believe you can accomplish this task? Yes, I do. Good, apprentice. Speak to Q-Girl in the workshop and she'll encode her instructions for the Betel onto a copy of the disc. There's one more thing. The Betel is located beneath the ancient Cryobarius of the Eaters. Time has worked to erode the mechanisms that contain their cryogenic mist. That freezing vapor bellows out of the chambers freely now, cooling the entire cavern. You will want to procure warm clothing to protect yourself. The spoils of the Mechanimists are yours, and remember, Apprentice, Baratham will look kindly upon your service. If you um, make friends with the Mechanimists, then you don't run into issues going in there. We may try to do that. We're also going to auto-explore this place. And we find a painted bizarre contraption, which has some information about Apollya Rarad. And uh, it says, in 3312, after murdering a popular rival with a helmet made of diamond. Wow! The Sultan of Cud disappeared because of Polyrarid's reputation for wiring charms to scrolls. He was chosen as the successor. We learn some history. Find some uh, various things around the place. Yeah, instead of just the carbine. Because previously it was just the carbine, right? Also, these beds have extra healing properties, by the way. Or not these ones. The ones in the medical place. Uh, at midnight, under the uncanny and onyx sky, the people of Talior Moor saw an image on the horizon that looked like a star in a bottle bathed in onyx. It was Methlenesp. After he came and left Taliamor, the people built a monument to him and there henceforth called him the onyx star in a bottle. That's an interesting one. I like it when I get those. Uh -huh. Murdered with a diamond helmet. Damn right. Yeah, these are the ones that give you extra healing properties. So if you... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I think it's... Attack, look, target. I think if you just rest here... There is a way to, like, get these to heal you faster. But, anyway... Let's go to the electric oven. So many people have never seen this area before. May need to examine them first. Maybe that's what it is. It's been a while. But basically what I'm trying to say is if you get sick in um, Caves of Cud, like if you get a disease and you have access to this zone... There you go. Um, if you sleep in these, you're more likely to get over the disease. So, just just saying. Let's just keep exploring. That's everything that I have access to currently. Go to that stairway down. 
don't have a key. Okay, that's what I thought. Same with this one. And then, yeah, this just goes down into the caves again. So you can just kind of keep exploring down here. Let's uh, pop up clairvoyance. And I'm going to beguile this, or not beguile, um, sunder the mind of this boy. And he dies pretty quick. All this. Just gonna clear creators. And then we're gonna go talk to Q Girl. Right, I don't wanna die. <laughs> I don't want to die. Which actually leads me to wonder if you can, like, walk backwards into this place from down there. Or in a treat for the rest of the game. Yeah, so, like, to me, like, I, I did a guided playthrough on my YouTube channel, which basically is just, like, how to get to this zone. So it covers Red Rock... Um, basically all the way up to Golgotha. Actually, did I go, go all the way up to Golgotha? I can't remember if I finished it. Um, but to me, once you've hit this zone, this is where the game begins. So. But it is almost 5 p.m. And it is 6.20. Uh, six hours and 20 minutes is how long I've streamed. So what we're going to do, we're going to go talk with Q-Girl and get her quest. And uh, Tuesday, in the evening, after I'm done with Dorfs, we'll be continuing this playthrough. And um, I think, because it's going to take some time to actually clear this whole playthrough, I think I will bonus streams. So if I do a Sunday stream next week, or if I probably won't be able to do next week, because I will be busy. But uh, if I stream on a Friday or a Sunday, I will be playing this. But uh, let's let's read uh, Q Girl's dialogue first. Disliked by bears for her queer appearance. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, hated by Garawites for questioning the legitimacy of their hierarchies. Loved by the Bratham. Admired by mysterious strangers for developing a quantum mechanical model. Quidzel, Quidzel, Quidzel. Welcome to the workshop, friend. What's Quidzel mean? It's a word I say out of excitement, sort of sort of a semantic extension of the feeling I get when I see a quidzel. Well, quidzel. It's a, a, a pretty bird in the trigon, tro, trogon family. And I tend to incorporate things I like into my idi idiolect. Um. Otho informs me that you have a method for decoding the signal. Can you encode your instructions for the betel onto this disc. Oh, I do, brave friend. I'll impart them, I'll imprint them now. So we got that done. So now I need to locate the Mechanimist's compound in Bethesda Susa. But I think this may be, actually, hold on, let me do this first. Across the field of the brass and chrome, and diodes blink in gears. Three steel barrels fit together into an arc-edged triangle of luminous ritualism, and they sit on a servo-articulated base mount. You have puzzling artifacts of cables, a light sconce, and Rotomus Y, who's currently deactivated, a machine wrought from primordial black metal into the likeness of a man. Rodinus Y towers over the halls of Great Gate. Physical features, serrated tungsten carbide axe fist. You don't ever want to get punched by one of these because you're almost guaranteed to immediately lose a limb if you do. This area has come so far. It really has. I mean, I, I, I first tried this game before it was on Steam Remaster. Um, but never made it very far. Like, didn't even finish the first quest. Kind of thing. Like, got stoned to death by monkeys. And 
made it to this area when they added the Tomb of the Eaters. The furthest I got pre roleplay was the trolls, the invisible guys. The invisible boss was the furthest I got. And kind of said, fuck it. <laughs> um, and then when they added roleplay, I saw credits. And since then, I've been able to get further than Bethesda Sousa without saving. I mean, like, this playthrough, I had one dumb death because I was just trying to finish a quest too quickly. Because this is a roleplay playthrough, so I can save, right? I had one dumb death, which was in the Rust Wells, because I, sa because I was tr tried to fly into the Rust Wells and got hit by a seed spawn by a seed that was flung by a plant and then fell and died, which is funny. Um, and died once because I took an unnecessary risk, which I didn't need to take. Um, so if I'd been playing, I wouldn't, if I'd been playing on classic, I wouldn't have died in either of those situations. I don't think it was a very funny death. It was very, very funny. Like just falling is just... also a pretty rare achievement, by the way, falling to your death worth getting, but, um, chat room, we're going to save and quit. And we're going to put a pin in it here for this playthrough for today. Because today is technically one of my days off, and I do need to, you know, eat food. I guess I need to eat lunch at some point. I, I ate breakfast today, but it's getting close to 5 p.m. So, uh, chat room. If you are new to this channel and haven't watched me before uh, and want to see the VODs of this, the VODs will go up on this YouTube channel right here, Blind Extras. I do, of course... I have two YouTube channels. One's mostly Dwarf Fort stuff, though. Uh, Tuesday will be the next stream. We will be uh, picking up Dwarf Fortress for the first five hours of the stream. And probably around 3 or 4 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday, I will be swapping to Caves of Cud. And we'll be, we will be streaming uh, Caves and Cud until uh, late. And then that's just going to kind of continue until I finish this playthrough. VODs will go up on the YouTube channel um, as I, uh, you know, get them done. But we're going to finish this, and then we're going to go raid some body. So uh, don't run off too quickly, unless you really want to. Is there anybody else streaming CUD? I always like to look at the directory I'm in before I look for other people. Nobody I recognize. 